the John series part 3D subtitled Elijah the Forerunner the John series part 3D subtitled Elijah the Forerunner the message the John series Apostle Chwenga is teaching Christ from the book of John. The book of John. And during the preaching of this series, we then realized that Apostle John could not introduce his book well where he was focusing on the divinity of Christ. Yes. Without passing through the ministry of John the Baptist. So part three in this series is dedicated to the ministry of John the Baptist, John the son of Zachariah, John who was baptizing in the Jordan River, John who was the forerunner to the assignment of our Lord Jesus Christ as the Savior, that is to say, the Son of Man. Again, the Tower Nation and the City, the Paris and Marizo in on the John series, Marizo in on the John series, in Marizo in Paris, the Christ to Jesus. Neguti Christu Jesu ndiye marizo yedu nguwa zose. Tiriku pari za Christu Jesu. Tishitora magwaro kubaku bukura Johan. Rinema chapter 21. Rinova ndiro bukura kupeze sera hapa mabuku mana. Akanga anyoru wapa msoro pe ushumiri waishe wedu Jesu Christu. Aripanyi kamu mazwa ke epanyama. Taka zote tijirava bukura Johani. Taka wana kuti Johani wakanga ajida kuzizisa umungari wa Kristu. Asimu kuzizisa kwa kia umungari wa Kristu. Akatangane kuzizisa pa msoropia ushumiri we mwinyai wa Kristu. Akanga ali Johani mbabatizi. Mungana wa Zakaraya na Ruza Beta. Wakanga wali wa Prisita. Patembe ya kanga ili pa Jerusalem. Saka pati thri yese. Tiriku ziza taka tarisa ushumiri. Wajo wanu mbabatizi. Wakapari zi wanu ziza zi kwa na jo wanu mzaruriri. Taka ziza shishinji kwa jo pa msoro pa jo wanu mbabatizi. Tika ita zokororo. Tika ziza, shataka nga taziza, tichita kuona, utitaziza, shaka kwa nae. Na asi chiripa part 3D. Yes. Ya tatumiza munga msoro wekuti, unyai wa Elijah. Saka Elijah, ndiye waticha ziza, neja, kikana, utaka tari sana nae. Asi ushumiri watiku ziza, ndewa John the Baptist. Yes. Saka natawa rinishona pasa, nishungu na kuti kunyange wa nwakasura sika shungu za ninga zizi sa asivaru kuziva kuti tineshi na nguwa chei mumari zwa ya nasi. Yes. Matthew chapter 11 verse number 7 to verse number 14. Yes. And as they departed, Jesus began to say unto the multitude concerning John, What went you out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken with the wind. But what went you out for to see? A man clothed with soft raiment. Behold, they that wear soft clothing are in king's houses. But what went you out for to see? A prophet, yea, I say unto you, and more than a prophet. For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. 
Verily I say unto you, Among them that are born of women, they hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist, notwithstanding he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violence take it by force. Up to verse 14. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. And if, we, if you will receive it, this is Elias, which was for to come. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> We have given a promise that you are going to learn something that you have never learned before. It is always something that you are going to become familiar with. Yes. When you come here. For starters, our emphasis when we taught part 3C, we emphasized on the greatness of John the Baptist. And what we have realized is that we have found and we have gathered a lot of proof that emphasizes the point that John is the greatest servant of Jesus Christ to live on planet Earth. Of all the servants of God who are going to be in this human body, from the days of Adam until the coming of Christ, John the Baptist is the greatest. Yes. How much do you want to be great? You cannot give yourself greatness. Something that we learned from John himself. Yes. When he spoke in John chapter 3, John said, A man can receive nothing yes. except that which is given to him from heaven. Yes. In John 3, 27. Yes. A man can receive nothing mm -hmm. except it be given him from heaven. Yes. I can start to talk about myself and start to tell everyone I am the great one. I am the greatest. Pastor Balo is not great. Paul is not great. John is not great. I am the greatest. You can make yourself great, <laughs> but that doesn't make you great. It's like a toto is claiming to be a bird. Doesn't matter how loud the turtle is, shouts, declaring that it can fly. <laughs> that will never enable the turtle to fly. Yes. Don't try to make yourself great. If you are going to become great, you must receive it from heaven. <laughs> <laughs> That's the problem. <laughs> You can start to call yourself God's general. That will never make you a general. <laughs> you can start to call yourself senior apostle or most senior prophet. That will never make you senior. <laughs> you have given yourself greatness. Never forget this. Yes. A man can receive nothing. Yes except it is given to him from heaven. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If we have got a question about who is the greatest, we should never ask one another. We must ask heaven. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> There was a rajiti katanga was hit great. Alo Dorina was because She knows I got a fungi. Good is great. Concerning people calling themselves great, 
Yes. Let us look at two very, very stubborn scriptures. <laughs> Galatians chapter 6, verse 3. If you are struggling to master scriptures, please never forget this one. You will need it for the rest of your life. Yes. For if a man think himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. <laughs> pastor. <laughs> the problem, Pastor, is... <laughs> They don't know they are nothing. <laughs> they think they are something. Yes. But the apostle is saying, no, no, no. <laughs> These guys are nothing. Yes. But they think they are something. Yes. The end result is they have deceived themselves. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Kato zoreba aureta wes. Poto amsoro kaita zey kazo teka vote ro dura. Pesra wa kufunga utu no agenda committee kudenga. Iono gori nothing zago. Ah, this scripture is exciting. If a man thinks himself. To be something. Yes. When he is nothing. He deceives himself. He is deceiving himself. Yes. If you don't want to be deceived, tell yourself every day that you are nothing. Yes. You will be safe. Yes. Never tell yourself That's that you are something. <laughs> I don't know what Elder. What I know what Elder. Editor. Hey, prophet I something. It doesn't matter what you have done. If you stop the sun to move for 20 hours, you will still remain nothing. Yes. Until God tells the world that you are something. Yes. You cannot tell people yourself that you are something. Mm -hmm. You have no capacity yes. to turn yourself from being a nothing <laughs> into a something. Yes. You have no capacity to do that. Yes. Only God can tell us who is something among us. Yes. Second yes. Corinthians 10 verse 12. Yes. Maybe let's read up to verse 13. These are the two scriptures that are going to guide us in learning today's message. Yes. This is not a parameter, it's a guideline. Yes. It's a guideline in order for us to make sure when we say John is the greatest, you are never going to hear Apostle Chuenga saying, I am below John's position. <laughs> Yeah. John is the greatest. People want to talk about John is the greatest. It is Jinswa. Saka mimi kabanga and mimi junior wa John. So, first, I'm going to John Mukuru, but in any case, Saka ita pana John. I'm sorry pana John. Saka, of what I got in the moment, pana da poor, pana poor, pana number two. Of what I have, number three, pana pasta baloy. Pasta baloy do very third, pa ira kire greatest. Unongo ju feel na kuto kungo ita nothing kwa nyanya. Again go anoka something. For we dare not make ourselves. Now, brother Nelson, yes. remember the word dare. Yes. It means never try it. Yes. <laughs> if you hear someone saying dare me, he will be warning you to never try him. Yes. So Apostle Paul, he says in verse 12, we never try it. Yes. We will never do it. <laughs> we dare not yes. start afresh. For we dare not make ourselves of the number. We will never try to compare ourselves with the group. Yes. 
or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves. There are others who are walking around with a lot of accolades. But Pastor they... Chris, PhD, <laughs> yes. Senior Prophet, Major One. Mm -hmm. Some are even calling themselves the voice. <laughs> some are now calling themselves commanders in the army of heaven. <laughs> we shall never compare ourselves with yes. some that commend themselves. Yes. But... Some are entering into the book the most influential men of God in Africa. Mm -hmm. There is a top 50, Pastor Baloy. Mm -hmm. There is a top 100. There is a top 10. And there is a top 5. Yes. Top 5 most anointed men of God in Zimbabwe. <laughs> top 10 richest pastors in Zimbabwe. You will never find us in that group. <laughs> Even if they do a top 1,000, yes. we will not qualify yes. to be in the top 1,000. Yes. We are not allowed. <laughs> if we can't qualify to be in the top 10, we will be fine. We don't even want to qualify to be in the top 1,000. Yes. We are not allowed. Yes. First. Yes. You can see it. If you find yourself missing on that list, <laughs> maybe you are reading H Metro, <laughs> top 50 powerful pastors in Harare. You are looking for your name there. You don't find it. You don't find the name Gerald there. You go and ask your wife, yeah. am I not a pastor, my wife? Why do these people hate me? <laughs> <laughs> Pastor, may you dare not. Yes. May you never try it. Yes. yes. <laughs> so if Chuenka's name misses on those lists, I'm very happy. Yes. Because the instruction is dare not. Yes. yes. Brother Nelson, <laughs> dare not. Yes. Make yourself of the number. <laughs> yes. Never try yes. to join the crew. Yes. Never try. Don't try to join the top tens, yes. the top fifties, yes. or the top hundreds. Yes. Start afresh. For we dare not make ourselves of the number. Yes. Or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves. Some are commending themselves. But they measuring themselves by themselves yes. and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. <laughs> <laughs> First, uh, the standard that they used to compare <laughs> is themselves. They are, they are the standard. They are the standard. That's anxiety. If you ask them which criteria yes. have you used? Yes. To put my guy on number two, <laughs> <laughs> you will laugh out. <laughs> Apostle Paul made a very standing conclusion. Yes. He yes. says, if you read the top 50 list, yes. they are not comparing themselves with the right standard. Yes. They are measuring themselves by themselves. Yes. <laughs> they are comparing themselves among themselves. Yes. For so, are they wise? He says, no. They are not wise. Mm -hmm. And yes. this was. Panelist Rabuda. So my pastor and power. What in Tony? Tony newspaper. Yes. Over one of the top fifty. Of one was number five, Pana Fred. I don't think it's anointed soap. What was one more? Would be fifty shoe and a shy wow. No, which I put them married with Marie Cool that has opened them to fifty. Yes, you are becoming a fool. But the instruction church is day or not. Yes, some of it as I go. Sambo Jeza Jaco. Pacangonzi Panema competition jet. A good track of an Vacuru, Pagati Pavan, Van Vacura, Gudarikavam, Van Vacacum, Bira Gudarikavam, Van Vari, highly anointed or highly powerful or highly wealthy. Ukangons, what is the good Panama Lista Gadaro? Dare not. Yes. Don't try it. Yes. It's not wise. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it is exciting, Pastor. It's even more exciting. Yes. Yes. 
but we will not boast of things without our men. <laughs> but <laughs> did you hear that? Yes. Pastor, <coughs> we can't boast because the measure is not ours. Yes. Oh. We, we will not boast of things. things that are beyond mm. our mm. measure. Yes. Oh. Which means greatness is not something we have the capacity to, to measure. measure. Yes. Oh. Therefore, we cannot boast. Yes. And the reason why they are compiling lists, Forbes magazines, the top tens and the top hundreds and the top fifties, the idea is to find something to boast about. Yes. But we will not boast. Yes. Because we do not have the measure. Yes. The measure of greatness is not in our hands. Yes. <laughs> the one who accords or who affords, who allocates the measure. It is God. Yes. Mungari ndi anopa greatness. Hati gone kuzipa greatness. Tega. Saka che kuziku zira apa. Hapana. Yes. Mazona. Yes. Ize jitaka dai. Maraka muta munga mjumiri pakatipedu pakatipewa anabatiri kupare zira. Yes. Aka uya munga raka tindie mkuru kwa muri. Adia ato mkuru kutaka msiwa. Yes. Those are not the money, a panajedu. Yes. I see a dupote. I'm a father, Funz, whenever I could get a cup of Takamas, Vesas, and Sasakoma. We are Vane Good in fun now. Anoti, Tok Bootsra is a Zuka Skirawa, my days. And the top of the Funz was Sinabas. Yes. Yes, read again, verse 13. But we will not boast of things without our measure. Yes. But according to the measure of the rule which God hath distributed to us. A measure to reach even unto you. You see? Yes. <laughs> Pastor, we are going to boast according to the measure of the rule which God has distributed to us. Yes. Which means the word the rule there, it's a standard, it's a yardstick, yes. it's a unit of measurement, it's a scale of balance. Yes. Mm -hmm. It is actually distributed. Yes. Mm -hmm. By God. Yes. And according to Paul, we are distributed to us this rule. Yes. So that we can reach to you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Which means whatever greatness that God grants to every servant, to mm -hmm. any servant, mm -hmm. it is for his purpose. Yes. It's not for you to gloat or to boast. Yes. And say, I am great, I am greater than this. <laughs> I am doing this. Greater. It's not about us. Yes. It's about the the assignment. Yes. yes. So, children, we are talking about the greatness of John. Yes. John's greatness was not given to him by Apostle John the Revelator or Apostle Matthew who wrote it in Matthew 11. The greatness of John was given to him by God. Yes. I hope you still remember John chapter 3. A man can receive nothing except it be given to him yes. from heaven. Yes. That's verse 27. Yes. So whatever we are talking about in respect of John the Baptist, John never applied for it. He didn't pray for it. He didn't fast for it. He was not given an honorary PhD by a certain famous university in a certain famous country. No, it was given to him mm -hmm. from God. Yes. John did not think to be something. <laughs> John was declared to be something. Yes. <laughs> so John did not deceive himself. Yes. <laughs> At no point do you hear John saying, I am the greatest. Go and read your Bible. Yes. Mas we go to John in the area greatiga. Ah, na go to Orwa na area great watch. Yes. Which is a very big problem, Pastor. Because what we have today is like if you were introducing me today, you would have said, "Let us welcome the great one." Mm. I have never seen a man like this. Like what they say about Mwaja. Mm -hmm. Mwaja comes from the cloud. Mwaja is omnipresent. People are seeing Mwaja in their dreams and they are receiving healing. He's a mighty one of God. That is not how John spoke. When John the Baptist talked about himself, 
They asked him, who are you? He said, I am nothing. <laughs> I'm the voice. By saying I'm the voice, Pastor, he actually meant that he is nothing. Yes. It was the Lord who said, my, 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 don't play with the John. That one is great. <laughs> but he himself. Yes. Ah, let's hear what John said about himself. Yes. He never said I'm great. If you start to say you are great, well, you are deceiving yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and that's Galatians 6, verse 3 for you. Yes, yes. John chapter 3, verse number 25. Then there arose a question between some of John's disciples and the Jews about purifying. And they came unto John and said unto him, Rabbi, he that was with thee beyond Jordan, to whom thou bearest witness, behold, the same baptizes, and all men come to him. And John answered and said, A man can receive nothing, yes. except it be given him from heaven. You yourselves bear me witness that I said, I am not the Christ, but that I am sent before him. <laughs> he that hath the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom which stands and hears him rejoices greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. The, this my joy therefore is fulfilled. He must increase, yes. but I must decrease. Yes. There can never be a declaration of nothingness yes. that is greater than the one that John gave in verse 30. Yes. Yes. According to John, I must become nothing. Yes. The one who must increase is Christ. Yes. He that comes from above is above all. He that is of the earth is earthly yes. and speaks of the earth. He that comes from heaven is above all. Yes. So, this is the testimony of a great one. Mm. The great one did not say, I am great. <laughs> he said, I am nothing. Yes. He said, I must decrease. Yes. And he must increase. Yes. yes. He didn't start to say, I am great. Ask him. He can tell you about me. I'm not an ordinary man. Let me tell you. Yes. There is no one like me on this earth. That's not how John saved the Lord. Yes. So there's always going to be this contest within us, Pastor. I can tell you today, and it is a confession, it's a constant battle yes. where the devil always comes and whispers nonsense into your ears yes. and starts to tell you, because of what you have done today, yes. you are now someone. <laughs> you are now something. Yes. No part the same one, no compare one. And what are at that time, Bosins were Satan not unto us own. No great watch you. If a pastor tells you that the devil doesn't say this, it means he's already deceived. Yes. <laughs> It's a battle that you must fight all the days of your life. Yes. yes. You must always tell the devil, it's not true. <laughs> yes. It's a lie. It's a lie. I've preached a powerful sermon that is true. Yes. But that does not qualify me to be a great one. Yes. Because it was not me preaching. Yes. It was the spirit of the Father speaking in me. Yes. By telling you that you are great. He's despising the spirit that was in you. Yes. yes. So he's creating a fight between you and the Holy Spirit. Yes. You get it? Yes. Uno Sara you are great, Holy Spirit has his it. <laughs> so you will be increasing. <laughs> Holy Spirit will be decreasing. Yes. And that's how you lose your job. Yes. Kana matiramu, where are you poor so? Satan know you are a great one. Don't listen to the devil. <laughs> He will lead you astray. Can <laughs> feel out to something, so don't go out to try with something to prove to yourself that you are nothing. Yes, I do that a lot. Yes, yes. Si mungu amu na ano gona kuya munga na wamari oshumi ra kuauri ota amu na wamari mara ndi tu magudindu kupe mari o boy bata so sata no vat unofungo tde usiri muna wamaru apu eri mari uru muna wamara singa it. Canada or Saturn, do Vandai and the Sayes and Disha and Second Ascend, they don't prove that this money does not make me a man of God. Now we end the Sayes, now go not into Sarah and did less. 
kana mari position it's always a battle yes you have to be very careful kashandiswa na mwari the other method that the devil brings your downfall is when the devil tells you something that is not true <laughs> but that is associated with your greatness somehow the devil loves to tell you that you are now great mm -hmm. creating pride of life yes he creates pride yes if he doesn't whisper personally into your ears he will send someone to do that no chakiri waka public charging booth kakozo kana pota kati kakasangana newe kuti i hazana bona munhu omwe arakaita semi izvo zvanenge ari satan anenge achiti your great pesa waita sane bukati neza ngo ngufamba uchiti ah hakuna akaita semi man one kunaka kwe babylon ndaka vaka izvo zvokona kuzvikudza kwapinda mauri kudzikisirwa kunenge kwa kutanga ufuti yes it's a warning. Yes. No, when I go into one, I can't bother you. Certain of what you are great, because of you, we never have been there before. So we can now see people who have never been there before. Because what you want to go out, put on your fur, and you do not have been there before. So we can't go into one. No, we should not change the soul of our mother. I am coming, sister. I am coming. We can go in by him. Dopinda mumwea. Ijo akuna verse inota oraneje song inopinda vanu mumwea. Akuna song inopinda vanu mumwea. Mumwea mupindwe. Mumwea muno garwa. Walk in the spirit and not according to the lust of the flesh. Akuna verse inota orasho kupinda mumwea. But in a good to know tempted. Uno kanga no as he says, my. Uno tango to believe about it. In indica imba, but no pinda mumwea. I told him when we was in the two and a half. Yeah, I was already talking to him. Uto na mwa zungu zasonge rota chuko poko. Chuko poko ita ge chingo ten ten ita ge chota ge chilezo. Ozo na chagu de ozo chagu da usimu. Ozo mna kutera bi. Rabi upi ko rabari magwara muzkuona wamatsi zini la rabi mamu ana kupi. Let's leave it. This was a boundary. No one can give himself greatness. Yes. John is the greatest. Yes. And let us remember what the Lord said about the greatness of John. The Lord Jesus Christ is the commissioner of every servant of God. Yes. If you are going to find an apostle, a pastor, a teacher, an evangelist, a deacon, an elder, an overseer, an administrator, an helper, Everyone who is going to serve in the church of Jesus Christ, he is hired by Jesus Christ. But sometimes Jesus sends the elderly servants to go and hire others. Like Apostle Paul sends a letter to Timothy, telling Timothy to ordain yes. bishops. The bishops who were appointed by uh, Timothy, they were not hired by Timothy. <laughs> Timothy was acting like an HR officer who has been given a task by an HR manager to hire a servant for a company. Yes. But the servant who is hired by the HR officer is not working for the HR officer. He's working for the one who owns the company. Yes. If you are working for a bank, say Kebs, building society, when they ask you, where do you work? You can't mention the name of the recruiting officer. You mention the name of the company. I work for cabs. But the day you got a job, the letter of appointment which you received, it didn't have a signature of the bank. The signature on that letter of appointment was the recruiting officer's signature. Yes. So Timothy appoints bishops and deacons and elders at Ephesus. He is like an HR officer. He is like a recruitment officer. But the one who is hiring all these workers is the institution. Yes. Cabs is recruiting employees. That's what they say on the newspaper. So everyone who serves in the house of God, you are hired by Jesus Christ. Yes. You are a servant of Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter the recruiting officer you interacted with. When you got into the service of Christ, 
but the one you are working for is Jesus Christ. Yes. So because of that, it is Jesus Christ only who has the power to tell every other worker who is the CEO in that company, who is the CFO. So you can't just join a company and say, I am now the HR manager. Yes. You cannot appoint yourself. You can't give yourself a performance appraisal either. Yes. Those who are working better and those who are lazy, they are going to be pronounced as well by the owner of the company. Yes. So, let's look at Romans 14, verse 4. Yes. Who art thou that judgest another man's servant? Yes. Mm -hmm. To his own master he stands or falls. Yes. yes. He shall be holding up, for God is able to make him stand. Yes. Pastor, this is a very important scripture. Yes. Who are you to judge another man's servant? Yes. Who are you? <laughs> to his own master, he yes. stands or falls. Yes. So it is important for everyone among us to remember who is our master. Yes. Pastor Baloy must know his master. Yes. Evangelist Mafolo must know his master. Yes. I am not his master. I am his senior. Yes. But we answer to the same master. Yes. Are we, are we very clear? Yes. So when we talk about the greatness of John, we must ask ourselves one question. Who pronounced this greatness? If it is the master, then it is done. And by the way, who is the master? Matthew 23, verse 8 and 9. Who is the master? Let's just read verse 8. Who is the master? Because we are going to see a lot of people claiming to be masters. Yes. But be not you called rabbi. For one is your master. Even one Christ. is your master. Yes. Even Christ and all you are brethren. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Read again verse 8. But be not you called rabbi. Yes. For one is your master. Now, even remove Christ. the word rabbi there. Yes. Put the word master. We want to simplify it. Yes. But be you not called master. Yes. For one is your master. One is your master. Even Christ. Who is our master? And all you are brethren. We are all brethren. <laughs> yes. As far as ownership of this enterprise is concerned, there is one master. Yes. John 13, verse number 12 to verse 13. So after he had washed their feet and had taken his garments and was set down again, he said unto them, Know ye what I have done to you? Ye call me master and lord, and ye say well, for so I am. Ah, Read again. <laughs> this one is also very simple, Pastor, yes. to remember. Yes. It's John 13, 13. Yes. Yes. You can never forget it. <laughs> you call me master. You call Lord. Jesus master and Lord. And he say, well. You are right. Yes. For so I am. It is true. I am your master. I am your master. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> there is no question about it. Yes. Father Nelson, who is our master? It's Jesus. He is our master. Mm. So let us listen to what the master said about John. <laughs> yes. Matthew chapter 11, verse 11. Let us Very, hear what the master said about John. Yes. yes. Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women, they hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist, notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Now, I know some struggle to understand grammatical structures. <laughs> According to Matthew chapter 11, verse 11, very easy to understand as well and to remember. Yes. The Lord did not say John is greater than all that are born of women. That's not what the Lord said. The Lord did not say John is greater 
than all that are born of women. Yes. The Lord said, <laughs> among those that are born of women, mm. there is no one greater <laughs> than John. Yes. What it means is John is the greatest. Yes. Because if there is no one greater than John, mm. it means John is the greatest. Yes. Mm. Because when we did the comparatives and the superlatives, we say good, better, best. So there is nothing that can be better than the best. So Jesus is saying there's no one better than John. And what it means is John is the best. Best of what? That's what we are going to hear from Luke 7, 28. Because these two writers, they complemented one another as far as the position of the master is concerned concerning yes. uh, and pertaining to the greatness of John. Yes. So John is not great. Yes. John is the greatest. Yes. Yes. For I say unto you, among those that are born of women, there is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist. Aha! <laughs> you see, <laughs> Pastor Baloy, Ukukwanzi, <laughs> there is no one greater. Yes. Look, no, but he's a prophet, Father. Yes. He's a prophet, Father. Yes. yes. There is no greater prophet yes. than John the Baptist. Yes. But he that is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. Of course, the one who was least, we talked about him. Yes. It was the Lord as a son of man, yes. as a servant. Yes. He still remained greater than John. Yes. Jesus was the least in the kingdom of God at that particular time. And of course, that is according to uh, Psalm 8, verse 4 to 6 is corroborated by Apostle Paul in Hebrews chapter 2, 6 to 9. God made him a little lower yes. than the angels. He became one of the little ones. He became a little one. He became less than what he was before. Yes. But even in his days as the little one, he still remained greater than John. Yes. Otherwise, John would not have said, Yes. He must increase and I must decrease. Yes. Otherwise, John would not have said, the one that comes after me is greater than I. Yes. The one whose shoes latch it, I am not worthy to untie. John still admitted, I may be greatest among servants, but I can never be greater to the extent of comparing with my master. Yes. So John is not being compared with Jesus. John is being compared to the servants of God, yes. which are allegorically summarized by the word the prophet. Yes. <laughs> we are all servants of God. Yes. We are all prophets that are sent to speak the word of God. Yes. Because John was a preacher. So the comparison we have is comparing John with everyone who is going to preach. Yes. There is not going to be a preacher who is greater than John. Yes. <clears throat> whether you are talking about uh, the New Testament or the Old Testament, whether you want to interpret the Lord's statement spiritually or physically, he yes. still remains the greatest. Yes. Because if you interpret the Lord's speech about John the Baptist's greatness, literally, it means every preacher who has a mother is inferior to John. <laughs> yes. Because Jesus' statement was everyone born of women. Yes. So as long as you have a mother, John is greater than you. If you want to interpret it literally, <laughs> if you say, well, we want to interpret it spiritually, then we will ask you, who are you? If you say, I am a pastor or a prophet, we say, well, let's look at Luke 7, verse 28. <laughs> Yes. There is no greater prophet than John the Baptist. Are you a prophet? I am a prophet. John is greater than you. Sit down. Yes. You are thinking that you are something when you are nothing. Yes. <laughs> you have deceived yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so, could I make an argument? So, I'm not going to 
kanota orwa nema nema kava kaninge kachiti no painzi na Jesu John is the greatest I compare one one work Old Testament but are released ku New Testament mukuru kuna John amato makakanzi kwaereka Yes, that was. There is an argument that says when Jesus says he that is listing the kingdom of God is greater than John, it means the usher in the New Testament is greater than John the Baptist. <laughs> mm. There is that very, very lazy argument, a poor argument. The reason why that is not an argument at all, it is because of the word prophet. If they say John is being compared with those in the Old Testament, our question is, are there no prophets in the New Testament? If there are prophets in the New Testament, then the argument ends. Yes. If they say John is being compared with all the Old Testament prophets only excluding the New Testament prophets, then we will ask you, do we have people who are not born of women in the New Testament? If we find such men, well, they may be greater than John. As long as they are born of women, those which are in the New Testament, <laughs> they are still inferior to John. Yes. But if you are going to go into the spiritual interpretation of these two scriptures, Matthew 11, 11, and Luke 7, 28, we then realize that we will need to go to Galatians chapter 4, verse number 23 and 24. But he who was born of the bond woman was after the flesh. Yes. But he of the free woman was by promise, which things are an allegory. For these are the, the two, two covenants. covenants. Yes. The one from Mount Sinai, which gendered to bondage, which is Edgar. Yes. So, so go back to verse 24. When he said these are the two covenants, yes. he left out one word there. <laughs> he should have said these, these two women yes. are the two covenants. Yes. Because in Galatians chapter 4, the apostle was comparing Hagar and Sarah. Yes. They are not one woman, they are two women. Yes. So when we read Matthew 11, 11 and Luke 7, 28, the Lord said, Among those that are born of women, which means they are more than one woman. How many women are there? Spiritually, there are two women. The women are Ega, which is Mount Sinai in Arabia. Yes. Let's now go back for this Ega, verse 25, is Mount yes. Sinai in Arabia. Yes. And answereth to Jerusalem, which now is, and is in bondage with their children. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. You see now? Yes. So there is Mount Sinai. The Old Testament. She is the first woman. Yes. Then there is Jerusalem, which is above, yes. which is the mother of us all. Yes. These are the two women yes. that Jesus was talking about. Yes. When Jesus said, I say unto thee, let's go back to Matthew 11, 11. Yes. Verily I say unto you, mm. among them that are born of women, yes. the women Jesus was talking about, yes. We are not Makandua's mother and Magaya's mother. Pastor, they are looking for who is the greatest. Yes. Makandua is angry that Magaya stole people from him. As by the Magaya's or the Magaya's, I mean, I see so. The two women are Hagar and Sarah. Yes. These two women, remember, they are two covenants. Yes. One from Mount Sinai. Yes. Which is gender the two bondage. Yes. But Jerusalem, which now is, which is above. Yes. Is the mother of us all. Yes. So the two women are the two covenants. Yes. The Old Testament Indeed. and the New Testament. Yes. Of those that are born of these two covenants, there is not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Even though Jesus Christ 
in his days in the flesh, he was greater than John. Yes. Oh. That's what Matthew chapter 11, verse 11 says. Yes. And means. Yes. Fairly I say unto you, among them that are born of the two covenants, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist, notwithstanding Jesus Christ in his days as a son of man. Yes. He was greater than John. Yes. Notwithstanding Jesus Christ, when he made himself lower than angels, he was still greater than John. Yes. Notwithstanding Jesus Christ, yes. when he made himself of no reputation, he was still greater than John. Yes. That's what Matthew chapter 11, verse 11 means. Yes. Yes. You pick a name. Yes. Yeah, I would see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so John is the greatest and there is no doubt about that and after proving that John is the greatest we then proved in what way was John greatest he's the greatest servant of God he is the greatest preacher he is the greatest prophet if you group all the apostles, all the pastors, all the teachers, and all the prophets, and all the priests, John remains the greatest. <laughs> and what was the proof, Pastor, to just do a short recap? Can you give us a few examples that proved that John is the greatest of all the servants of God? Maybe just one. I think the most important one is that um, the master our Lord Jesus Christ is the one who uh, appraised him. In other words, he's the one who told us that John is the greatest. Yes. Because the most important thing is the standard, because even if you want to measure ourselves, we don't have the measure. We become unwise. We become yes. unwise. Yes. We deceive ourselves. Yes. The, st the starting point, Pastor, you, you were very correct there. You didn't want to go into the other nitty gritties of the examples and yes. the other aspects of John's life. Yes. yes. You just focused on who said it. Yes, yes. Who said it? It is the master. Yes. It was not Apostle Chwenga. No, no, no. It was not Apostle Paul. Yes. It was Jesus, the yes. master. Yes. Master dear Agataura. Kutikana Mukaporo Vita Zay. I'm sick of I'm sick of Yes. So, what did I pass in a chimney pass Joy. Chino Shamisa. Not Yes. I join as Nagura Gurange. I were a very greatest. Even I join Nagapari Zaga Dagua. Yes. I don't dream of Robert as you go to. Nekuti Master does Raga Taur. It remains true. Yes. There is no one who can take away John's greatness from him. Yes. Because the master pronounced it. Yeah. Huh? Maybe we can talk about it for some 15, 20 minutes. Yes. Believers, I want one or two believers to come on the Zoom platform to give us a rundown of the characteristics of the greatness of John. Mm -hmm. We did a review many times about these matters. Yes. We should never struggle. Pastor is cited the master issue. Yes. Give us our Zoom link. We want to do it as soon as possible. Yes. John and DM Kuru. Kanaokatanga kutinda kuko na kupari zamsoror pasima kumbari mdenga. <laughs> you are embarking on a self-deceptive drive. Yes. Unenge ochinzi wafunga kuzi deceiver. Because shauna itai wewe azuki ite great. Yes. Ano kuna kutaurotari great indiani. The master. Yes. Master nasi tamuziwa. Ani mavesa kaka wan. Yes. Tabata mamwajo. So this is the Zoom uh, uh, details, brethren. I would appreciate if we can get one believer in the body of a man, the other one as a lady. We just want to make sure that we are pulling with the same strength on the yoke of the gospel with our ladies. Yes. I'm happy that our ladies are coming with 
some very profound understanding. Yes. And like what they were doing some few months ago. <laughs> they are pulling up their strings and they are getting stronger in the doctrine. Yes. That's commendable. We thank you, ladies, for that. Send the word contribution to the email address appearing on the screen, testimonies at grm.org.zw, and our media team will quickly bring you on board. Just two believers. Yes. In what way is John the Baptist the greatest? Brother Nelson, you are going to share with us one point that you still remember from yes. the previous messages. Yes. Um, he is the only uh, prophet who was uh, prophesied of. And uh, we read the other time the scriptures in uh, the book of Isaiah and the book of Malachi, Isaiah chapter 40 and Malachi chapter 3, where it was prophesied of him, of his coming. So we have scriptures which pointed to John before he came. Prophecies of yep. John. Yes. John is the only pastor <laughs> who had prophecies of his coming mm -mm. Yes. before he came. Yes. How many prophecies do we have? We have yeah, three, three of them. Yes. We have Isaiah chapter 40, verse 3. Yes. Mm -hmm. We have Malachi chapter, chapter 3, three verse, verse 1. Nine. And we have Malachi chapter 4, four. Verse, five. Verse, verse 5 and, five and six. 6. Yes. These are prophecies of the coming of John. Mm -hmm. They were given by prophets, <laughs> which means already those who gave the prophecies of John are inferior to John. Yes. You see? Yes. Can Isaiah go prophet and she go yako John? Kuto leva kuti Isaiah muti hiki kuna John. Yes. Akuna ji prophet and she go yako apostle chwenga. Sagasiana ni. Yes. Siana ni. Gadi go pare siana ni ma go. Yes. So you don't know how to go. Ah, but I don't meet a great pastor. <laughs> yes. Because President Wapa wanted the list. Yes. Yeah. Let's not forget a man can receive nothing. <laughs> yes. Except it is given to him from heaven. Yes. Yeah. So this greatness of John, it was given to him from heaven. Yes. And that's why it's an issue. That's why it's an issue. Yes. So when we have someone, we are going to bring them up quickly. But let's look at the scriptures. So those who are coming, you are no longer going to cite this point now. Yes. Because Brother Nelson has already cited it. That John is the only man of God who came to preach with pre-existing prophecies mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of his coming. Yes. Not prophecies that need interpretation. Very clear prophecies. Yes. <laughs> and John knew that I have prophecies of my coming. Yes. And we shall look at one of those scriptures. Let's look at Isaiah chapter 40, verse 3. <clears throat> yes. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare you the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Aha. Mm -hmm. So, Pastor... When they asked John whom he was in John chapter 1, yes. the Bible says, verse 19, and this is the record of John, mm. when the Jews sent priests and Levites mm. from Jerusalem to ask him, yes. who art thou? And he confessed and denied not, yes. but confessed, yes. I am not the Christ. <laughs> and they asked him, what yes. then? Art thou Elias? And he said, I am not. <laughs> Art thou that prophet? <laughs> and he answered, No. Then said they unto him, Who art thou? That we may give an answer to them that sent us. Yes. What sayest thou of thyself? Mm -hmm. Let's listen to his answer in verse 23. <laughs> he said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. As he said, the prophet Esaias. You yes. see, 
So chai zivaka. Chai ziva. Chai ziva kutaiwa. Ili ni mana waka ndine ze kutindinani. Kana Isaiah mwina ya mzimba zenyu. Kana kutiku beita ya mikida. Yes. Isaiah wana waka taura neza angu. Yes. Dini zwire unodanari murenje. Rurami sayi nzira zashe. Yes. Sejo wakari wana Isaiah. Yes. So we read Isaiah 40 verse 3. Mm. Isaiah prophesied of the coming of John. Mm. And when they asked John, tell us who you are, they want an answer. You, you say you are not one of the prophets. Then who are you? What do you say of yourself? He said, well, Isaiah spoke about me. Why are you getting perplexed and mesmerized? <laughs> I don't have to be someone very difficult <laughs> to identify. Yes. Yes. Your own prophet talked about me. Dini is Gwiraire one Isaiah. Chichiro Nezaipa. Ipa po pastor. Paka pasina mune munu. Akanga ambo interpreter Isaiah 40 verse 3. Yes. Jekuti a interpretation ye kutangaga. Ilipa John chapter 1. Yes. Iyo yifesa tashiviringa yifesa 23. Yes. Ndiyo first interpretation ya Isaiah 40 verse 3. Wanwai gona kutota haiwa. Akupana pango pashaka nyogo utinduwa wairewa. Saka, mavesi ese. Anu tauraneja jeso. Yes. Asa Isaiah 40 verse 3. Inu tauraneja John. Yes. 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 I told her that she could have gone. He has a child. Yes. That's why he is the greatest. Yes. The other scripture is Malachi chapter three, verse one. According to Malachi three, John was a messenger. Yes. Who is going to be sent ahead of Christ, and suddenly the Lord shall come. Yes. Which means the moment they saw John, mm -hmm. they had to know. Yes. From this moment onwards, mm. suddenly the, the Lord, Lord shall, shall come. come. Mm -hmm. Malachi chapter 4, verse 5 and 6. Yes. Behold, I will send you, Elijah the prophet, before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And ye shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. These are the prophecies of the coming of John. Yes. John was not yet born. His father was not yet born either. And his great grandfather was not yet born. Between the book of Luke chapter 1 and the book of Malachi, yes. they are more than 400 years apart. Yes. Which means when Malachi gave the prophecy of John, he was not seeing Zachariah around. It was not a speculative prophecy. Yes. <laughs> he was not a news analyst. Yes. He spoke from nowhere. We have someone on the Zoom platform. Let's see if they can tell us in what way is John the Baptist the greatest servant of God among all of us. Greetings to you, brethren. How are you? How are you? How are you? Hi, Magadi. Welcome to the hot pot. <laughs> Tuesday, yes. tell us in yes. what way is John the, the Baptist the greatest? Uh, John the Baptist is the greatest uh, according to Luke chapter 1, verse 11. Is the only one who was born according to the Holy Spirit when God sent the, the, the angel, when the angel appeared to Zachariah when he was in the Hall of Holies. Then he said, uh, your prayers have heard, then uh, your wife shall conceive a child, and uh, he shall be great in the sight of the Lord. 
So this is the scripture which uh, shows us that uh, John was the great, because uh, uh, he is the only one who was born according to the to the to the promise of God. Uh, unlike the other prophets and the other uh, preachers, they were appointed, uh, they were called, they were not uh, born with that gift. Yeah, yeah. Maroa. Maroa. So, Toyita, teacher to me, I'm a Zai. Ah, of course, I'm a guy one day. How are you? How are you? How are you? Yes, answer <laughs> Oh, okay. Come on. Come, come. Tell us the other one. Uh, according to John 1, verse 6, John is the only one who sent from God. Then you are one of the four of us, we are but John and Gaga said you are from God. John was not just called. said he was not called. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, this is another one. So maybe we yes. are going to add a few more eggs into the basket. <laughs> That's one. Last one. Last one. Last one. There's the last one again. Yeah. Ah, wonderful. Tell us. Tell us. Alright, thank you. The only thing you didn't do is to introduce yourselves. How do you know where to send the eggs now? From Cape Town. Cape Town Assembly. Delft, Cape Town. Ah, brother Bright from Cape Town, Delft section. Ah, wonderful. Brother Kenneth from Cape Town, Delft section. Delft section. From Cape Town, York section. Brother Brenda from Cape Town. Brother Solomon, Cape Town, York Assembly. Ah, oh. Brother Brenda from Cape Town, York Assembly. Brother Cape Town, York Assembly. South Africa region pastor, they've given <coughs> us essentially two contributions. Yes. The first one is that even before he was born, the Lord had already spoken about his greatness. Yes. yes. And this is what is spoken or said in John in Luke 1.15. Yes. The angel spoke to Zachariah and said, For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord. Yes. yes. Which means men did not see John's greatness. Yes. It was the Lord who saw his greatness. Yes. So don't think that when people think you are great, God also <laughs> thinks you are great. People saw John as a demoniac. Mm. But according to the Lord, John was the greatest. Yes. Mm. And the other contribution was John was just sent. Yes. He never received a calling and then was later sent. Yes. He came with a commission from his mother's womb. Yes. Quite a number of things, Apostle, that we have learned so far. Even if if we look at um, John the Baptist's lifestyle, it was a lifestyle of self-denial. He devoted his entire life to the service of the Lord. Unlike the other prophets, even in the Old Testament, also ministers in the New Testament, uh, if we look at John's life, we see a man who would not pursue his uh, 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 personal agenda. He had no personal interest in this world. Yes. 
Chona kasi na maplana ake. Yes. Chona nabo viraga chaga o kana kurora. Kana kutindudombo. Jita omari. Timbo chinja o yembe. Yes. Pangu wariku driver mota inandina. Chona nakana mbeita Facebook account. Kusindari. Kusindari. Kwa kwa myself ya chitumiro. Kwa kwa Dubai umbo turo opichari kwa 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 mbora di zawani kwa 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 Dubai kwa 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 Attachment to the things of this world. Zero interest yes. in the affairs of this life. Yes. That was joy for you. Yes. Is those very guys also. Yeah. Is that you take a figure? Nezota take a change, take a pastor. I'm also take change a embe. Nezota get a service, take change a embe. So now I got to change. So that's it. That's why we find those who can't. That's a four year. Yes. I just go now. Cook it and join. Yes. So now I got to change a embe. Yeah, I can help him. I'm sorry. I was at the pay my pastor. <laughs> <laughs> it's pastor at the pay my but Panas was a trip before you know. Not a boy, Joseph, go name Manguana. No Bosca, but no, 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 Mori. Yes, John Anga, Sina Mori. Yes. Can I want to Sagana join or Sagan Moon watch away? Yes. Anga, Sina Jim was you say quack. Yes, careful food. Ah, which careful. Kau tu tu buat cerita ni, awak bapa setan bos. Wiza di tempat juga berde. Indah ini bos di juga ni cakura. Nasi wiza makan apa wiza sekarang makan wiza. Asyik bude ba. Ente zine leba kan kutu zua ni. Yes. Saya kata, even maskan aja itu. Apa nak yang bukti bukan jual nak bu? Kunjung kita akan kan zaman ini mesuah akan kan bos. Sekarang bukan misa apa ni? Aje tu orang berjuta. Akan kau misa pas kalau bukti bukti kau ni lah kau. Unuh di paman nyam apa? Kau nongsi di tevera. Kau tevera ni ni bodoh agaknya. Pas kalau aku tiwa, kau nong wone kira wone kira. Yes. Jo nangka asing kau wone kira wone kira. Yes. Asal tu kau fukanya tu jo ni pas taka. Oh. Orang kau sih segera tinggi. Yes. Kita itu useless of the future. Pas kita dah diem je doh ya. I don't worry on this. We have someone on the Zoom platform, the last one, the last caller. Let's see whom we have. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mama. Magadi, Pastor Balei, Apostle, and our brother Nelson. We are OK. okay. Go straight to your contribution. In what way uh, is John the Baptist the greatest preacher ever to live on planet Earth? OK. Hello, Anna Mama. Eh, John the Baptist, Akaita Jisone, which I got some shampoo eat work. Chemu Babatizavan, name Pura. Ababatizavan, name Pura Baptist, Miajo Yaga in a mini. Meaning yet true Baptist. Ya is who I am, my amu chain. Saka, but John one, verse twenty five. Panamu decides also put the John Agata or Agati. Agati to Magati Babatiza name for Abunswa. Saka tuko wana kuti baptizimi yake ya nga isiri baptizimi ya manga manga. Ende iso so isu pachasu. Shiru kutarati za kuti John. Anga hali the greatest. So you are saying John is the one who introduced the baptism of water. It had never happened before. Yes. Yes. Ah, Maroa. Maroa. Ya ticha ita. Mkoma neo so ni ndo wa chashita makreta ache mazai. I was not here. Pane imwe rea minayo. Pane ziru sara. Pane shumwe ziru sara. Shaka kocha. Ok. Ini ni waya nji na yo nje kuti John the Baptist ndiega aka kwa nisa kwe fora na we the lamp dispensation. Apana umwe mshumiri kana muprofita akaita fora na wende lamp dispensation kwa John the Baptist. 
The lamb dispensation had one preacher. He was the only preacher of the lamb dispensation. That is true. Yes. You didn't identify yourselves. Please. Munongo taura kuti ndini ningi ndiri ku section yakati ridini yakati. Okay, in end don't the brother Judith three strands section ku Cape Town. Ah. Dine ne amadzaka wanda. Brother Mary in Cape Town, we we love you so much. Do we have someone else with something again to add? I mean, the natural uh, Johnny Achi Sarwa, Akazarwa, Akazaz, when I'm Yamucheni, and then it turned out to Pana John, dear Ega, Kanga, are a life person. But we saw Kanga are natural. It's about Pana Adam, Adam, Achazakun's wines, grammar, no doubt about natural man. Amen. Ah, that's wonderful. We have to clear base for him for this one. Yes. You are very right. He received the Holy Spirit from his mother's womb. And by virtue of him receiving Holy Spirit, John became spiritually alive, but in a world of dead people. Yes. Even though that life of John spiritually was also a figure of the time then present. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Anyone else with another contribution? <laughs> uh, greetings, Apostle. Rejoice, Kutsa. It's not enough to teach you how to join a journey. Changa teach you how to change a journey. Strange, you should be like Anga Vachara Maungo. I am old testament. One was not old. This is how to teach you. We take the other one who prepares. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, all right, all right. Thank you, Strand Section of Cape Town. Uh, I will allow the last person to speak if there's anyone with something different. Thank you, Brethren Rejoice. Yes. I'm in Anamai, and I don't talk about the story of the Kutogarakwake, are outside below. Izo zo izo, zero thirty to forty forty. Johnny, and I regret. Nobody, ah, the age of profit a kauya, a sila kwa sabu gara ne vanu, eva Israel. Vangwe we seta yawa ona vachungo tende na gara na Israel. But age of, aga kwa ni sabu pa kauya aga ina kugara ega in the wilderness. Saka, achina ana kwe zramula he lived outside the law. Ah, wonderful. Let's clear yes. hands for them yes. as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. I will, I will leave you now. <laughs> but what, what they've said now, Pastor, <coughs> they were almost closer to what I wanted. I was expecting someone to talk about the forerunning ministry of John. Yes. It was not just about what he was preaching, but it was more of how he lived. Yes. So this believer was talking about him living outside Israel, beyond Jordan River, mm -hmm. in the desert. He was wearing a jacket of camel's hair and a leather ghetto and, and surviving on honey and locusts. That life that John lived was a picture of the life of Christ, mm -hmm. who left his heavenly habitation. Yes. His glorious throne in heaven. Yes. And according to Philippians 2, from 5 to 9, he made himself of no reputation. Yes. He took upon him the form of a servant, mm -hmm. and he was found in fashion as a man. Yes. Mm -hmm. And he became obedient unto death, mm -hmm. even the death of the cross. Yes. Mm -hmm. So John was the son of a high priest. He had the rations apportioned and allocated to him according to the law. Yes. John was the only son in Zacharias' house. Which means, naturally, he was a crown prince in Zacharias' house. Yes. He was the heir apparent. He was a Jew to take over the priestly duties in the event of his father's demise. Yes. But he made himself of no reputation. Yes. He took away all those privileges from himself. And he lived the life of a pauper, the life of a vagrant, the life of a desperate street kid. Yes. In the wilderness. Yes. yes. That is not how we are living. 
and and I also expected them to have read Luke chapter one, um, verse number, um, verse number eighty, which says, "And the child grew, yes, and was yes. strong in spirit, and was in the deserts yes. till the day of his showing unto Israel." Oh. John grew up in the deserts. He never lived among men in an ordinary, normal house set up. Yes. John was not raised by a family. Mm -hmm. He was raised among jackals and foxes of the desert. Yes. To open your agaramayo. Sagawaya vanunda kukuki zana nae. Vanu tangira pap. Nam komane sa. Ah, putangira pana. Especially at that point, it's uh, very important, uh, Apostle. I wanted also maybe just to add or uh, read Mark chapter 9, verse 12, which says uh, it was the Lord now uh, speaking of uh, John the Baptist. He said, And he answered and told them, Elias verily cometh first and restoreth all things, and how it is written of the Son of Man that he must suffer many things and be set at naught. So uh, that scripture alone also tells us of how much the life of uh, John the Baptist was going to portray the suffering of Christ in a picture. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, the, the life of John and the way he died. Yes. Mm -hmm. The Lord said he was going to die the same way John died. Yes. And he was going to be rejected the same way they rejected And him. Jesus yes. was going to be rejected the same way John was rejected. Yes. And we also said, we are learning to suffer for the sake of Christ. Mm. We are learning from Christ. Christ has set an example for us. He suffered for our salvation. Mm. We are ready to suffer for the sake of the gospel. Mm. We are happy to be counted worthy to suffer shame yes. for the sake of his name. Yes. He has set an example by suffering and dying on the cross, mm. we can follow that. Yes. We can emulate that. We can learn from that. Mm. But on the contrary, what makes John the greatest yes. is that he suffered before the fact. Yes. Yes. He suffered for the sake of Christ, yes. who had not yet suffered, <laughs> to set an example for him. Yes. Yes. <laughs> greatness was he yes. pointed Israel to a better man. Yes than the man that was married to Israel by then, yes, yes. representing the Levitical priesthood. Yes. Even before Christ had demonstrated that he loved this woman by paying the bride yes. price. So he became the, the friend of the bridegroom. Yes. yes. But before the, the, the man had paid anything. Yes. yes. So do you have any simbi? Yes. But the simbi Yes. The New Testament the pastor is telling people yes. you need to come to Christ. Because Christ has died for you. Yes. John preached about Christ mm. and he had no reason to tell Israel to yes. come to Christ. Yes. Because the death that Christ died, which is our reason for preaching Christ today, yes. in John's days, yes. that death was not yet there. Yes. So John Agapar Zirava and Jesus Utaganaga. Yes. As Jesus as a tafa. Yes. Is it no Zavaru to Yakuna Jesu Akanaka Kavira? Yes. John Agapar is a good Naka Kwa Jesu, Pasinam Chinjiva. Aka Chengeta Musika Nawashi. Yes. Pasina Chinjiva. Aka Rita Basairo was successful. Yes. So this is, this is the greatness of John. We are now going to, um, we want to give you a few moments to discuss and to digest what we have heard so far. When we come back, we are going to introduce Elijah the foreigner. Let us talk about this and we'll come back and continue with this message.
Yes, so we are back. So what we have today, the subtitle of the message is Elijah, the forerunner. To be preemptive, I want to share with you the purpose of this message. The purpose of this message is to answer this question. Why did John come as a fulfillment of the Elijah prophecy? Why did John the Baptist come as a fulfillment of the Elijah prophecy? This is something that has never been taught in the whole world. A few months ago, I shared a few things about it in another <coughs> region. I can't remember the name uh, of that region offered now. But in case others who may have been catching with us of late in this John series, they may not know the prophecy of John's coming, but in the name of Elijah. Yes. The prophecy is in Malachi chapter 4, verse 5 and 6. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before, yes. before the coming of the great and the dreadful day of the Lord. Yes. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, yes. and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. So, Pastor, Elijah was taken from the earth in 2 Kings chapter 2, from verse 11. Between Malachi and Elijah the prophet, they are not less than 200 years apart. <coughs> so when Malachi gave a prophecy that God was going to send Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Yes. Take note, children of God, that the great and dreadful day of the Lord was not the day our Lord died on the cross. The great and dreadful day of the Lord is judgment day. Yes. Apostle Paul talked about it in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, from verse 9 to 11. Apostle Paul talked about it in Acts chapter 17, verse 13 31. We know about the judgment day when we look at Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse number 12 to 14, yes. Revelation chapter number 6, 9 to 11, Revelation chapter 19, verse 11 to the end, Revelation chapter 20, verse 1 to 15. Yes. All these are scriptures that teach about this day of judgment, the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Yes. It is a terrifying day. According to Malachi, the Lord God of heaven was going to send Elijah the prophet before judgment day. Yes. And what was Elijah coming to do? Elijah was going to do what was written in verse 6 of Malachi chapter 4. Elijah was taken up to heaven, into heaven, yes. according to 2 Kings 2.11. But he was going to come back again before the judgment day. Yes. What was Elijah <coughs> going to come back to do? Let's see Malachi chapter 4, verse 5 and 6 again. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children. Yes. And the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Elijah was going to turn the heart of the fathers to the children. And the heart of the children to their fathers. Yes. Lest God would bring a curse upon the earth. Yes. So according to Malachi, before judgment day, Elijah was going to come again. That Elijah the Tishbite, who once lived in Israel, and who was taken by a whirlwind into heaven, 
he was going to come back again. <coughs> Did Elijah come back again? Let us go to Luke chapter 1 and let us listen to verse 11 up to verse number 17. We want to know if Elijah has already come or Elijah is going to come. Yes. What we are sure about is Elijah's coming must precede judgment day. Yes. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy <coughs> prayer is heard. And thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. Zachariah, more than 450 years after Malachi prophesied that Elijah was going to come, and he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to the fathers, lest I smite the earth with a curse. 450 years or thereabout after that prophecy, an angel of God appeared to a Levite whose name was Zechariah the high priest, yes. who was burning incense in the holy sanctuary because it was his duty to do so according to the dictates of the law. The angel said, Zachariah, fear not. Your prayer is heard. Your wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son. Yes. And you shall call his name John. Yes. So the name of this Zachariah child that the angel spoke about is known. Yes. The name was not going to be Elijah. Mm -hmm. The name was <coughs> John. Was John, yes. What was John coming to do? And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. Zachariah, you shall enjoy the birth of John, yes. and many shall rejoice at the birth of John. Yes. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord. Let's not forget who shall be great in the sight of the Lord. John shall be great in the sight of the Lord. Yes. And shall drink neither wine nor a strong drink. That means John was a Nazarite. Yes. yes. And he shall be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. That makes him great. Yes. Verse 16. And many of, of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. John was going to turn <laughs> many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. Yes. yes. Verse 17. And he shall go before him in the spirit and the power of Elias ah. to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. It's clear <laughs> Elijah was going to come. Yes. That is what Malachi prophesied about. Yes. And the angel spoke to Zachariah and said, no, Elijah is not coming. Yes. The one who is coming is John. Yes. <laughs> but he shall go before the Lord. Yes. In the spirit yes. and the power of Elijah. <laughs> so what Malachi meant yes. was not the return of Elijah, yes. but the return <laughs> of the assignment yes. of Elijah. Yes. Okay. Rabbi yes. Jirani? Yes, yes. In the spirit and power of... The word spirit there is the small s. Yes. That means it's a dimension. Yes. He was going to go before him in the dimension. Yes. And in the power of Elijah. Yes. The word spirit is not talking about the Holy Spirit of Elijah. <laughs> Elijah does not have Holy Spirit <coughs> of his own. Yes. This is a, a word that means an unphysical dimension. Yes. Just like we see... In John chapter 4, verse number 24, the Lord said, God is spirit, yes, and God. they that worship him must worship him in spirit and, and in truth. Yes. The word spirit there is with a small s. Yes. It refers to a dimension. Yes. God is a spirit, 
and they that worship him must worship him in the spirit yes. and in truth. <coughs> yes. The second count appearance of the Holy Spirit in John 4, 24 is with a small s. Yes. It is not referring to the Holy Spirit. Neither is it referring to a demon or an angel. Yes. Neither is it referring to the human spirit. It is referring to an unphysical dimension. Yes. Yes. The word spirit has so many meanings in the Bible. You have to verify the proper meaning in context yes. and not out of context. Yes. So John was going to come to go before the Lord in the dimension yes. and the power of Elijah. Yes. What dimension and the power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just. Yes. To make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Yes. In simple, what, what, what the angels said after the semicolon is the simplest way of defining the mission of the second return, the second appearance yes. of the Elijah ministry on earth. Yes. What does it mean that Elijah was going to come and turn the heart of the fathers to the children and turn the heart of the children to the fathers? According to Malachi chapter 4, 5, and 6. Yes. The proper interpretation of that prophecy yes. is that Elijah was going to prepare to make people ready for the Lord. Yes. Kuti Elijah acha uya agodzo sera moyo wevana kumadzibaba. Yes. Moyo wemadzibaba kuvana zvino revei. Mazwa ari pamberi pe semicolon pa Luke 1:17. Yes. Ano reva kuti Elijah kana uya acha gadzirira vanhu kuti vago gadzirirwa ishe. Yes. Israel was not ready for Jesus. Elijah's job <laughs> is to make Israel ready for Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> Elijah Amen. was going to come and he was going to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. So what Malachi said is a mystery that was interpreted by the angel when he spoke to Zechariah. Yes. In Luke chapter 1, verse 17. Yes. So Malachi chapter 4, verse 5 and 6 is interpreted by Luke chapter 1, verse 15 to 17. Yes. This is how we do <laughs> forensic analysis of scripture. Yes. It can never get better than this. You never go anywhere where you are going to hear the things you are going to hear today. Yes. Brother Nelson. Yes, Apostle. Van wa Israeli. Ishari kuya. Yes. Asa wasi ready. Tochi ita say kuti Israel even ready for the Lord. So kazi gati to me Elijah. Do masguaga wazgua Malachi. Yes. Mutuma no vazo yaguna zakara. So kazi don't don't worry about Malachi. Malachi akawona in the dark. Mazwe Elijah kuana. Chile gai tu kutana nguri le chira we chakanga chari wana Malachi. Yes. Mazwe kuti Elijah kana wia. Acha zosera moyo ye mazibaba kuvana ne moyo ye vana kumazibaba ano reva kuti Elijah ano uya kuzoita kuti vana va Israel va gadzirir we ishe yes. ishe ago uya vari ready yes. kutambir wana ishe mm. asi Elijah asri ari kuya <laughs> kuru kuya Johani aine dimension ya Elijah yes <laughs> <laughs> you see <laughs> now, but he passed. You see, it's difficult. Yes. But let's prove that indeed John is the fulfillment of the coming of Elijah prophecy. Yes. We have read, we have done it before. <coughs> we are going to do a quick run. Let's read again Matthew 11, verse 7 to verse 14. We yes. just want to prove it. Yes. And. As they departed, Jesus began to say unto the multitudes concerning John, What went you out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken with the wind. But what went you for out for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment. Behold, they that wear soft clothing are in king's houses. 
But what went you out for to see? A prophet, yea, I say unto you, and more than a prophet. For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist, notwithstanding he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. And if you will receive it, this is Elijah, which was for to come. Aha! Uh -huh. If you want to receive it, yes. this John the Baptist yes. we are talking about, yes. he is Elijah, yes. who was prophesied by Malachi. Yes. Yes. The Lord was very clear, if you will receive it. Mm. So what I'm preaching today is also a preaching on that condition. If you will receive it, Elijah was fulfilled in the ministry of John the Baptist. If you will receive it, this John yes. I'm talking about, uh -huh. he is Elijah, which was for to come. Yes. Matthew 17, verse 10. Yes. And, and his this, disciples this, asked him, saying, Why then say the scribes that Elijah must first come? <laughs> and Jesus answered and said unto them, Elijah truly shall first come and restore all things. But I say unto you that Elijah is come already, and they knew him not, but if done unto him whatsoever they listed, likewise shall also the Son of Man suffer of them. Thirteen. Then the disciples understood that he spake unto them of John the Baptist. <laughs> so the question is how many <coughs> are understanding this? Because disciples understood Yes. The Lord spoke in verse 12, Pastor. Yes. He said, but I say unto you mm. that Elijah is come already, yes. and they knew him not, mm. but he have done unto him whatsoever they liked. Mm. Likewise shall also <coughs> the Son of Man suffer of them. Yes. So this is Matthew 17. John the Baptist had already died in Matthew 14. Mm. So when the Lord said they have already done to him, Whatsoever they wanted, mm. the Lord was actually saying, they have already killed him. <laughs> yes. Elijah has already come. Yes. And they knew him not. Yes. And they have already killed him. Yes. <laughs> the same way they killed John. Yes. The son of men <clears throat> yes. shall suffer in their hands. Yes. yes. Verse 13 says, then the disciples understood <laughs> that he spake unto them. Of John the Baptist. <laughs> <laughs> so, if Apostle, even until now, it means those who are going to understand that uh, uh, John the Baptist is the Elijah that was to come. Yes. They are the disciples. They are the yes. disciples of Christ. Yes. If you are not a disciple of Christ, yeah. you will still be waiting for the coming of Elijah. Yeah. <laughs> but the answer is, Elijah is come already, <laughs> and they killed him. Yes. yes. If you will receive it, yes. it's John the Baptist. Yes. And the disciples understood. Yes. Well, they are talking about John the Baptist. John the Baptist. Yes. So there is no problem. There is no confusion among us. When Malachi prophesied, <coughs> saying that Elijah was going to come again, Malachi was prophesying about the mission, the ministry of Elijah. Yes. yes. Malachi was not talking about the coming of the person Elijah. Yes. yes. Malachi was talking about the ministry <laughs> of Elijah. Yes. Uh -huh. Malachi said, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet. Yes. What Malachi meant there was that, Behold, I will send you a ministry. Just like that of Elijah. Yes. That's yes. what Malachi was saying. Yes. On the contrary, the Jews did not understand yes. that John the Baptist, his ministry is the ministry of Elijah. 
Yes. yes. Up to now, they are still waiting for Elijah. And I want to tell you today that there are no believers in Israel right now. Yes. There are Christians, a few of them. Yes. But the true believers, you never find them in Israel. Yes. The reason why Israel is rejecting Jesus today, one of the major reasons is their failure to understand Malachi chapter 4. They say, Malachi said, before the day of the Lord, we must see Elijah. Yes. So they want to see Elijah. They do not understand that what Malachi meant was the dimension or the yes. ministry of Elijah. Yes. And not the person Elijah. <coughs> now, this is not why I am here. <laughs> why I am here is to ask this question. Of all the Old Testament prophets, why Elijah? <laughs> yes. Why didn't Malachi say, I will send you Isaiah the prophet? Why didn't Malachi say, I will send you Jehu the prophet? Why didn't Malachi say, I will send you Obadiah the prophet? Yes. Why Elijah in particular? That's the purpose of the message. Yes. Well, the answer is, Elijah was a forerunner. <laughs> <laughs> That's why the message is subtitled, Elijah, Elijah the forerunner. Yes. Elijah was Elisha's forerunner. Yes. As I sit here right now, <laughs> the world does not know that Elisha was greater than Elijah. <laughs> if Elijah was a forerunner, just like John the Baptist, then we have to find someone in the days of Elijah mm -hmm. who was greater than Elijah. Yes. Because John is the present day Elijah yes. who is Jesus Christ greater than him. Yes. How can Elijah be a forerunner of nobody greater than himself? The message of John is there stands one among you greater than myself. Mm -hmm. I am a forerunner. I am forerunning for someone who is greater than me. Can I forerunner? Urgita forerunner kumunu mukuru kudari kaiwewe. Forerunner wati nae anonzi joanu mbaba tids. But aruku forerunner arimu office ya Elijah. Who no New Testament are greater than four and a tinae carry the Christ? Yes. So no can I lie, Jangari four and why the four and a one? The Yoshi is now Chagwan and Yika. Yes. Now let me tell you, brethren, I will prove to you that number one, Elijah was a four and number two, I will prove to you that Elijah was inferior to Elisha. I will prove to you about that. First of all, let us learn from John the Baptist. Yes. Let us learn Luke <coughs> chapter 3. Luke chapter 3. So I've been trying to write notes about the John series I gave up. Mm -hmm. I, I've, I've failed to do so. I don't know what I should have done. Verse number four, Luke chapter three, verse number four. As it is written in the book of the words of Elisha. As, <laughs> it, <laughs> as it is written. You can't take off Elisha. <laughs> Pastor, you can't take off Elisha from his mind. He's not talking about the book of Elisha. <laughs> <laughs> He's too bothering this man. Could it be true? <laughs> Elijah, greater than Elijah. In what way? <laughs> Drama like it was Elijah. Rara kanaka. Dogu sakari kuda kunzi chinya so it was in real time. Okay. Kuda asa Elijah so arfu rana kuna arfu rana kuno fano tamungari greater kudari kai. Chata kanga tisina kuta risande chekuti. Kana Elijah kanga arfu rana sa Johanum Baptist. Yes. 
Ndiye ni wangari mkuru kudarika Elijah, mazina Elijah wacho. Mhm. Mm Ifora na ani. Mm. Yes. Very exciting. We will not take an hour we'll be fine. We are going to prove that Elijah was Elisha's forerunner as much as John the Baptist was Jesus' forerunner. Yes. There is enough proof. Don't worry. Just relax and have a patient and a learning heart. You will be fine. Yes. As it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet. Let's, let's, let's start from verse number 3. And he came into all the country about Jordan, preaching the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. Yes. As it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare you the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. Thank you. Verse 14. And the soldiers likewise demanded of him, saying... The soldiers demanded. Yes. The soldiers did not ask patiently. Yes. The, the soldiers will always <laughs> demand. Yes. <laughs> they don't know how to speak nicely. <laughs> what did the soldiers demand? Saying, and what shall we do? And he said unto them, do violence to no man, neither accuse any falsely, and be content with your wages. Yes. And as the people were in expectation, yes. and all men mused in their hearts of John, whether he were the Christ or not. People John, were amused. Yes. And they were surprised whether John was the Christ, Christ or, or not. not. Yes. yes. John answered, saying unto them all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I cometh, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Now, let's end here. For corroboration, you could also read Mark chapter 1, verse number 6 and 7, and John was clothed with camels here, yes. and with a gate of a skin about his loins, and he did eat locust and wild honey, and he preached, saying, There comes one mightier than I after me, yes. the latchet of whose shoes... I am not worthy to stoop down and unloose. Yes. Mm -hmm. I indeed have baptized you with water. Yes. But he shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Yes. yes. So the purpose of reading these three scriptures, including Matthew chapter 3, yes. from verse number 11 to 14, yes. we were proving to you that this very concept of John being Elijah incarnate as a figure of speech. Yes. Because the, the dimension is not a, in the person. The dimension is in the assignment. Yes. The mission. It is the assignment to introduce one greater than the man on the ground. Yes. In both the scriptures, John admitted, John acknowledged, John considered there was one mightier than him. Mm. I don't know if we are still yes. in remembrance of what John said yes. in verse 7 of Mark 1. Yes. He preached saying, there comes one mightier than I yes. after me. Yes. The latchet of his shoes, I am not worthy to stoop down and unloose. Yes. Yes. This is the confession of a true forerunner. Yes. The one you are preaching about, mm. the one you are preparing Israel to meet, is obviously greater than yourself. John chapter 1, verse 25, And they asked him and said unto him, why baptizest thou then, if thou be not that Christ, no Elijah, mm -hmm. neither that prophet? John answered them, saying, I baptize with water, but there stands one among you whom you know not. He it is who coming after me is preferred before me, yes. whose shoes latchet I am not worthy to unloose. So we have so many scriptures. They prove that John was saying, Jesus is greater than him. Yes. So a forerunner is inferior to the man that he is introducing. Yes. Yes. According to Luke 117, the angel said to Zachariah, 
he was going to make Israel a people yes. ready for the Lord. and prepared for the Lord. Yes. John could not have been greater than the Lord. Yes. John was preparing Israel to meet with the Lord. Yes. The Lord was greater than John. We understand that. What we didn't know is that we, as he did all these things, John was doing them in the spirit and the power of Elijah. Uh -huh. So we are now going back to Elijah and finding out. So John is Elijah's ministry in real time. Yes. The reality of Elijah's drama is called John <laughs> the Baptist. Uh -huh. Yes. Which means Elijah was a forerunner. Who was Elijah a forerunner to? And who was mightier than Elijah, the one whose shoes slashed <laughs> Elijah was not worthy to unloose. <laughs> By the way, this, this phrase, this phrase appears both in John chapter 1, yes. verse number 27. It yes. appears in Luke chapter 3. Verse 16. Verse 16 and yes. Mark chapter 1, verse 7. Yes. That John was unworthy to, to stoop down and take off yes. the, legend. the shoes of the one that comes after him. What this figure of speech means is that John did not have the capacity to carry the burden that was going to be upon Christ. <clears throat> this is something that we, we do not have time, uh, enough time mm. to go into. We want to talk about the law of inheritance which is recorded in the book of Deuteronomy. Yes. If brethren go together and one of them die yes. Yes. and have no child, the wife of the dead shall not marry without unto a stranger. Yes. Her husband's brother shall go in unto her and take her to him to wife and perform the duty of an husband's brother unto her. Yes. And it shall be that the firstborn which he beareth shall succeed in the name of his brother which is dead that his name be not put out of Israel. Yes. And if the man like not to take his brother's wife, then let his brother's wife go up to the gate unto the elders and say, My husband's brother refuses to raise up unto his brother a name in Israel. Yes. He will not perform the duty of my husband's brother. Then the elders of this city shall call him and speak unto him, and if he stand to it, and say, I like not to take her. Then shall his brother's wife come unto him in the presence of the elders, yes. and loose his shoe from off his foot, yes. and spit in his face, and shall answer and say, So shall it be done unto that man that will not build up his brother's house. Yes. And his name shall be called in Israel, the house of him, that he had his shoe lost. It. <laughs> so the only concept that we can talk about today in respect of this statement, the one that comes after me is mightier than me. Mm -hmm. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the shoe, latchet of his shoe. Mm -hmm. What exactly does it mean? <laughs> John meant that he has no capacity to marry Yes. Jesus, we do. <coughs> yes. <laughs> Oi. He is not going to die without a child so that I can marry his wife. <laughs> because the elder brother or the younger brother of a deceased brother who has left a widow without a child, yes. he's supposed to marry his brother's wife to raise his seed for his late brother so that his late brother's name cannot be blotted out from among Israel. But if the man is not ready to inherit his late brother's wife, mm -hmm. this younger brother, he has to allow the widow to take off his shoe, to unloose the latchet of his shoe, and to take it off. It's an embarrassment. Yes. 
The man is refusing to sleep with me, <coughs> but he's my husband's brother. He doesn't want the name of his late brother to be maintained, to be preserved. Yes. So when John spoke, he says, the one that comes after me is greater than me. Yes. How <coughs> great is this man? He says, well, I cannot marry his wife. <laughs> if he dies without a child, yes. I am doomed. <laughs> I don't deserve to take off his shoe and marry his wife. Yes. Are you getting this? Yes. But what he also meant is that this man is not going to die and, and perish. <laughs> he is going to rise up from the dead. Yes. And he's going to start a family with his wife. Yes. So there is no need <coughs> for anyone to inherit his wife. Yes. He doesn't need anyone to take over. You get it now? Yes. Mm. <laughs> I cannot take over yes. from him. Yes. Yes. Kupisa shangu yake kutora over from him. To wakundikana. Wakundikana. Yes. Was Christ going to fail? That they were going to take off his issue? No, he was not going to fail. Israel was given Levitical priesthood and according to Hebrews 7, 11 to 15, the Levitical priesthood failed. That's why Christ came according to Romans 7, verse 4, so that he may be a new husband, so that we can be a fruit unto God. Yes. Mm -hmm. By rising from the dead. So John's message was, he is greater than me. Mm. In what way? I cannot take over his responsibilities. Mm. I cannot take over his church. Yes. I cannot have children. I cannot be a children for him. Yes. After his demise. Yes. Are you getting this? Yes. Mm. And the other issue is he is not going to take over somebody else's wife as well. He's going to marry his own wife. Yes. And have his own children. This is what John meant. Yes. What we have is a construction, a parameter of the relationship between the forerunner and his master. Yes. The forerunner is inferior to his master. The forerunner is weaker than his master. Yes. The forerunner cannot play the role of his master. Yes. The forerunner cannot finish off the work of his master. Yes. That's what we have now. Mm -hmm. What the forerunner fails to do, the master is coming to do the same. Mm -hmm. This is now the time for us to see that Elisha was a type of Christ, Elijah was a type of John the Baptist. Yes. Elijah was a forerunner to Elisha. Yes. Before we talk about any other evidence, because we have five set of evidence, yes. which I'm going to cite today. Elijah was Elisha's forerunner. And this is the proof. The first proof is John chapter 3, verse number 30 to 34. He must increase, but I must decrease. This is what the forerunner is saying about his master. Yes. The forerunner must be lesser than his master. Yes. The forerunner must decrease. The master must increase. increase yes. Take note of these characteristics of a forerunner. Yes. yes. He that cometh from above is above all. He that is of the earth is earthly and speaketh of the earth. He that cometh from heaven is above all. And what he hath seen and heard, that he testifieth, and no man receiveth his testimony. He that hath received his testimony, hath said to his seal, that God is true. Yes. For he whom God hath sent speaketh the words of God. For God giveth not the spirit by measure unto him. Yes, 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 yes. yes. 
We are so. in the right track. <laughs> we are in the right track. <laughs> and we thank God for, for that. Yes. <laughs> According to John chapter 3, verse 34. Yes. John testified <laughs> that the Holy Spirit that he received was lesser than the Holy Spirit that was in Christ. Yes. According to Luke chapter 1, John received the Holy Spirit when he was in his mother's womb. <laughs> and of course, this is according to yes. Luke chapter 1, yes. verse number 15. 15. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Spirit even from his mother's womb. So John was filled with the Holy Spirit yes. even from his mother's womb. Yes. But when he looked at Jesus, yes. when he talked about <coughs> Jesus, he said, well, the Holy Spirit that Jesus has, <laughs> he was given by God without measure. It was not measured. <laughs> Which means according to John, Jesus had a greater allocation yes. of Holy Spirit yes. than yes. John himself. Yes. <laughs> and this is the first proof that Elijah was Elisha's forerunner. Yes. Second Kings chapter two. Yes. Second Kings chapter two. These are the manner things that you were <laughs> studying and hearing about. What is this? <laughs> Let's read Verse number nine. Elijah was about to be taken. Yes. And Elijah was trying to dissuade Elisha from following him, but Elisha would not. Yes. So eventually, after crossing the Jordan River, Elijah asked Elisha a question. Yes. Let us hear the Elijah question and the Elisha answer. Yes. And it came to pass when they were gone over, that Elijah said unto Elisha. Elijah, speaking to Elisha, whom the whole world thinks that Elisha was inferior to Elijah. <laughs> Elisha was a servant to Elijah. <laughs> Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. <laughs> and Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. Oh, <laughs> Pastor, <laughs> what kind of a, of a request is this? <laughs> Elijah is about to go. Yes. And his question to Elisha was, Yes. Ask what you want from me so that I can give it before you go. Yes. Elisha said, I want a double portion of your spirit, of your spirit upon me. <laughs> <laughs> now tell me before we go anyway <laughs> if Elisha received a double portion of Elijah's spirit then who is greater between Elijah and Elisha <laughs> the one with the double portion is greater than the, the other one Ah, <laughs> Yes, because uh, John actually explained that in when John when we read John chapter three, uh, John the Baptist explained that if someone has a greater measure of of uh, of the Spirit, then he is greater. He is greater. Yes, he said, "I have Holy Spirit, but this one he was given Holy Spirit without measure." Yes. <laughs> Which means Christ was given Holy Spirit without measure. Yes. But of course, the Holy Spirit that was given was with measure. Yes. To John. <laughs> and this is what we have. <laughs> Elijah and Elisha. Tunakuona kuti mukuru kune mumwe ndiye upi? Yes. Zvikanzi na Elisha, inini basa ra mama mchita resele. Induda kuita daburu. <laughs> I want to remind you that in verse number 9 of 2 Kings 2, the word the spirit again is not with a capital S. Yes. Mm -hmm. It is not referring to the Holy Spirit. Yes. It is referring to the assignment. Yes. 
Elisha, what he meant to Elijah is that he wanted a double portion. He wanted Elijah's ministry yes. multiplied by two. Yes. Yes. <laughs> 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 Yes. Yes. Are we together, brethren? Yes. So Elisha's ministry is multiplying Elijah's ministry by two. That is evidence that Elisha is greater than Elijah. Yes. And we are not going to end here. This is just the beginning yes. <laughs> of the evidence. Let us prove. We don't want to read the rest of the chapter. Elijah left. Elisha received the, the jacket of Elijah. Elisha started his ministry. Elisha received a double portion of Elijah's spirit, but he did not receive it from Elijah. Let us maybe read it a little bit and see how Elisha received a double portion yes. of Elijah's spirit. Because gain seers are going to say, if Elijah was able to give Elisha a double portion of his spirit, then of yes. course, according to Hebrews 7, 7, the less is blessed by the greater. Yes. What I can prove to you, I know these are bonds to most of you, I can prove to you that the double portion of Elijah's spirit to Elisha, it was not given by Elijah. It was given from heaven. Yes. Just like what John had said in John chapter 3, verse 27. Yes. A man can receive nothing yes. except it be given him from heaven. <laughs> so Elijah did not give Elisha a double portion of his spirit. Yes. It was heaven which did that. Yes. Let us prove it. Let's read again verse 9, Second Kings 2. And it came to pass when they were gone over that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. And he said, Thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so. And it came to pass, as they still went on and talked, that, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire, and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elijah saw it, and he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel, and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more, and he took hold of his own clothes, and rent them in two pieces. <clears throat> he took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him, and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. Now, pastor, <laughs> between Elijah's jackets or jacket and Elisha's clothes, what was divided into two? <clears throat> it was Elisha's clothes. He took hold of his own clothes and rent them in two pieces. Mm -hmm. He didn't take up Elijah's jacket and tore it into two pieces. Yes. He tore his own clothes yes. into two pieces. Yes. When Elijah was asked for a double <coughs> portion of his own spirit, yes. Elijah's answer was, you have asked something that is too hard for yes. me. Yes. Nevertheless, if you see me when I'm taken from you, yes. it shall so be done unto you. Yes. Elijah never promised to do it for Elisha. Yes. Elijah yes. said, it, it shall, shall be, be done, done to you. Yes. yes. Because this assignment of Elijah was not owned by Elijah. It was given to Elijah by God. Yes. Mm -hmm. And God was going to take it from Elijah. Yes. 
and put it upon Elijah. Yes. <laughs> and he accepted that uh, what I was doing, you are going to take over. You are going to take over. But in a more powerful, a mightier dimension. Mightier dimension than yes. mine. Yes. You get it, what, what I'm saying now? Yes. Mm -hmm. So it was not Elijah who gave Elisha a double portion of his spirit. Mm -hmm. It was the Lord mm -hmm. who did it. If Elijah wanted to do it, he would have taken off his jacket and given it to Elijah. Yes. But the Bible says, no, that's not what happened. Yes. Because up to this point now, Elijah was already taken. Verse 13 says, he took up also yes. the mantle of Elijah that fell from him. Yes. If you remember how Aaron died in Mount Hall, yes. it was not Aaron who took off his clothes. It was Moses who took them off and put them upon Eleazar, his son. Yes. Which was a sign that was now <coughs> taking over from him. Yes. Mm -hmm. Elijah did not take off his jacket to give it to Elijah. Yes. Elijah's jacket fell from mm -hmm. Elijah. Yes. Which means somebody took it off from him. <laughs> he didn't want to give it to Elijah. Yes. That's why the jacket was not ended. <laughs> But the jacket fell down. Yes. <laughs> In all these circumstances, <coughs> Elijah has no capacity to multiply his assignment and give it to someone else. Mm -hmm. Only God can do so. Yes. Mm -hmm. We are proving if we say Elijah is greater than Elijah, Elijah is a forerunner to Elijah. That means Elijah is a type of Christ. If Elijah would have the capacity to give Elisha a double portion of his spirit, then what it meant was that it was going to be John giving Jesus Holy Spirit without measure. Yes. yes. But that's not what John said. Yes. John said God gave Jesus Holy Spirit without measure. Yes. <laughs> Are you getting this now? Yes. So we have to be very careful. Yes. But of course, most of the things we are saying now will not benefit the novices. Yes. yes. Now, is there other proof, Apostle Chuenga, that Elisha was greater in ministry than Elijah? <coughs> yes, there is proof. What should we do now? Let's go to 1 Kings 18, verse 1. I will prove to you that Elisha's ministry is a double portion of Elijah's ministry. Yes. And it came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year, saying, Go, show thyself unto Ahab, and I will send rain upon the earth. And Elijah went to show himself unto Ahab, and there was a sore famine in Samaria. And Ahab okay, called, it's chapter 17. Yes. Chapter 17, verse 1. <coughs> yes, this one we need it. It tells us that there was no rain. Yes. But how did this drought of lack of rain come into existence mm. in the first place? Let's see for how long was there a drought in Israel. Yes. Yes. And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, what did he do? Said unto Ahab, as the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, they shall not be Jew nor reign these years, but according to my word. Elijah, in his ministry, he stopped reign for according to this scripture these years. Yes. How many exactly? We don't know yet. But if we read James 5, verse 17, yes. it says, Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are. Yes. yes. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, <laughs> and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. Yes. yes. Three and a half. In his ministry, Elijah stopped rain for three years and six months. Yes. Let us read Second Kings chapter eight, and see how many years Elisha stopped rain for. Yes. If Elisha had a better assignment, 
a double portion of an assignment than Elijah. We must see a bigger drought in Elijah's ministry, yes. a longer drought than in the days of Elijah's ministry. Yes. Second Kings chapter 8, verse 1. Then spake Elijah unto the woman, whose son he had restored to life, saying, Arise and go thou and thine household, and sojourn wheresoever thou canest sojourn. For the Lord hath called for a famine, and it shall also come upon the land seven years. Oh! <laughs> How many years did the Elijah famine last? <coughs> seven years. How many years did the Elijah famine last? Three, Three and, and a half years. years. What is the relationship between the seven year famine and the three and a half years famine. It's a double it's portion. A double portion. <laughs> the Elisha <laughs> famine yes. is a double portion of the Elijah famine. Yes. By no doubt, Elisha's ministry <laughs> is greater than Elijah's ministry. Yes. Oh. Are we still together? Yes. Let's go back to First Kings 17. Verse 7. Yes. This is the third proof that Elijah was Elisha's forerunner. Yes. Yes. And, and it came to pass after these things that the son of the woman, uh, the mistress. So, of, this third proof, brethren, I am going to prove to you that Elisha's ministry was double in terms of its influence, its impact, and its severity yes. by so many examples. At this point, Elijah resurrected one dead person, but Elisha resurrected two dead people. And we see by these resurrections that Elisha's ministry or spirit was a double portion of Elijah's ministry yes. or spirit. Yes. Yes. And it came to pass after these things that the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, fell sick and his sickness was so that there was no breath left in him. And she said unto Elijah, What have I to do with thee, O thou man of God? Art thou come unto me to call my sin to remembrance and to slay my son? Yes. And he said unto her, Give me thy son. And he took him out of her bosom and carried him up into a loft where he abode and laid him upon his own bed. And he cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord my God, hast thou also brought evil upon the widow with whom I, so I sojourn by slaying her son? And he stretched himself upon the child three times and cried unto the Lord and said, O oh Lord my God, I pray thee, let this child's soul come into him again. And the Lord heard the voice of Elijah, and the soul of the child came into him again, and he revived. And Elijah took the child and brought him down out of the chamber into the house and delivered him into, unto his mother. And Elijah said, See, thy son liveth. And the woman said, said to Elijah, Now, by this I know that thou art a man of God, and that the word of the Lord in thy mouth is truth. So according to First Kings 17, Elijah resurrected the son of the Zarephath widow. Yes. Let us go to Elisha's ministry. That was the only person yes. that was resurrected by Elijah. Yes. Is there a better resurrection in the ministry of Elisha? Second Kings chapter 4. Second Kings chapter 4, yes. verse 32. Yes. And when Elisha was coming to the house, behold, the child was dead and laid upon his bed. He went in therefore and shut the door upon them twain and prayed unto the Lord. Yes. And he went up and lay upon the child and put his mouth upon his mouth and his eyes upon his eyes and his hands upon his hands and he stretched himself upon the child. And the flesh of the child waxed warm. Yes. Then he returned and walked in the house to and fro and went up and stretched himself upon him 
And the child sneezed seven times, and the child opened his eyes. And he called Gehazi and said, Call this Shunammite. So he called her. And when she was come in unto him, he said, Take up thy son. Yes. Then she went in and fell at his feet and bowed herself to the ground and took up her son and went out. So this is the first child yes. that was resurrected or the first person that Elisha raised to life. Yes. Second Kings 13 verse 20 up <coughs> to verse number 21. And Elisha died, and they buried him, and the bands of the Moabites invaded the land at the coming in of the year. And it came to pass, as they were burying a man, that behold, they spied a band of men, and they cast the man into the sepulchre of Elisha. And when the man was let down and touched the bones of Elisha, he revived and stood up on his feet. <laughs> Thank you. So, this is a very important point. Don't yes. you think so, Brother Nelson? It's very important because his bones now, <laughs> it means Elisha did not die. <laughs> because if Elisha had died, yes. then his bones could not have resurrected a dead person. Yes. <laughs> they threw a dead body into Elisha's grave. And when that body contacted Elisha's bones, yes. that person got <laughs> risen from the dead. Yes. What is the meaning of this? <laughs> there are so many questions we could raise in this scripture. Why was Elisha's grave open and not closed? <laughs> if Elisha's grave was not the only one open, then this body could have fallen into another man's grave which has no power to raise him from the dead. Yes. I preached a sermon some years ago titled The Open Grave. Yes. If Elijah, if Elisha had not died, this dead body would not have found his bones to make contact with yes. for him to be raised from the dead. Yes. His chastisement brought us peace. Yes. By his stripes, we are healed. Kurwazi wa kwake, kwaka tivi giraru gare. Yes. Uyu wakamutu kwa nima fupa elaisha we. Anuto famba chit. Do not tend to refer to Elisha. Yes. Die pass in a kufa kwa Elisha. Nika die in the kufa na nas. Yes. Yes. Elisha is a type of Christ. <coughs> yes. By his death, all those who were dead, <laughs> yes, <laughs> are now risen to life. Second Corinthians, chapter five, verse number thirteen to fifteen. We yes. are going to read the scriptures that prove that the death of Christ has given us life. Yes. And you are going to read also Colossians chapter number 2, verse 13 to 14. We want to understand those things. Yes. It's very important. It's very important. Yes. For whether we be beside ourselves, it is to God. Whether we be sober, it is for your cause. For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead, and that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Yes. Okay. Uh, Colossians chapter 2. Yes. From verse number... Okay, let's read from verse number 12. Yes. Buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen, with him through the faith of the operation of God, <laughs> who had raised him from the dead. Yes. And you, being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together 
with him. Yes. Having yes. forgiven you all your trespasses. Yes. Blotting <laughs> out the handwriting of ordinances yes. that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. <laughs> Quite, so, quite interesting, Brother Nelson. Very much. So the death of uh, uh, Elijah did not benefit anyone. Yes. But the, the death of Elisha is precious yes. because it gave life uh, to this man. As much as we also, we are now being raised uh, to life through him who died for us. Yes. Even Christ, yes. Uh, so, verse 15 of, of, of Second Corinthians is, is quite elaborate. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. So this man who, who was raised by Elisha's bones yes. is now obliged to live for Elisha. Actually, yes. Elisha died for him. Elisha he did not for die him. for his for own. Yes. <laughs> he just yes. didn't die, Elisha. He, he died he, he for died, this man. He died for this man. Yes. Yeah. And, and there are so many scriptures. Isaiah 53, verse 1 to 11. Uh, 1 Peter 2, 23 to 24. 1 John chapter number 4 it's also another scripture that proves to us that we are only alive today because Christ has died for us. Yes. <clears throat> Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judged righteously who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. First John 4, verse 9 to verse number 10. In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. Herein is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Thank you. Yes. So Christ was sent to be a propitiation for our sins. Yes. The man was buried in a grave. It was lower. They thrust a dead body there. Yes. And the dead man was revived. Yes. So this is another proof that Elisha's ministry was superior in nature yes. to Elijah's ministry. Yes. Can you see that? Yes. Let us prove again. First <laughs> um, Kings 19, verse 1. Yes. And Ab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and with and with thou how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Yes. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. So Elijah killed the prophets of Baal. Yes. When Jezebel <coughs> heard it, he sent a message yes. to Elijah. <laughs> and Jezebel <laughs> said to Elijah, by tomorrow I will kill you. <laughs> Pastor, <laughs> Jezebel told Elijah, I will kill you tomorrow by yes. this time. Yes. You will be dead. Yes. <laughs> Let's see how Elijah reacted <laughs> to Mama. Yes. yes. And when he saw that, he rose and went for his life and came to be a Sheba, which belongeth to Judah, and left his servant there. Yes. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, <laughs> and came and sat down under a juniper tree, and he requested for himself that he might die, and said, It is enough now, O Lord. Take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. And no, let's, let's end there. Yes. <laughs> when Jezebel sent a message to Elijah that I'll kill you by tomorrow. 
Elijah went into the wilderness. And Elijah prayed to God. <laughs> Kill me. Elijah said to God, it is enough. <laughs> Take away my life. Yes. For I am not better than, than, my, father. than my fathers. Yes. <laughs> Why is Elijah asking God to kill him? Elijah is afraid of Jezebel. Yes. yes. <laughs> Are you getting this? Yes. Second Kings chapter 9, from verse number 1. And Elisha the prophet called one of the children of the prophets and said unto him, Get up thy loins and take this box of oil in thine hand and go to Ramoth Gilead. And when thou comest thither, look out there Jehu, the son of Jehoshaphat, the son of Nimshi, and go in and make him arise up from among his brethren and carry him to an inner chamber. Then take the box of oil and pour it on his head and say, Thus says the Lord, I have anointed the king over Israel. Then open the door and flee and turn not. Yes. So the young man, even the young man, the prophet, went to Ramoth Gilead. And when he came, behold, the captains of the host were sitting. And he said, I have an errand to thee, O captain. And Jehu said, Unto which of all us? And he said, To thee, O captain. And he arose and went into the house. And he poured the oil on his head and said unto him, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, I have anointed thee king over the people of Israel, over the people of the Lord, even over Israel. And thou shalt smite the house of Ab, thy master, that I may avenge the blood of my servants, the prophets, and the blood of all the servants of the Lord at the end of Jezebel. For the whole house of Ahab shall perish, and I will cut off from Ahab him that pisseth against the wall, and him that is shut up and left in Israel. And I will make the house of Ahab like the house of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, and like the house of Baasha, the son of Ahijah. And the dogs shall eat Jezebel in the portion of Jezreel, and there shall be none to bury her. And he opened the door and fled. Thank you. <laughs> So these are two prophets. Yes. The one is in the wilderness asking God to take his life. Yes. Because he's afraid of Jezebel. Yes. The other one is ordaining a general yes. to go and kill Jezebel. <laughs> yes. But they are operating in the same country, in the same land. Yes. Pastor, are you getting it? Yes. Elijah received a message from Jezebel. Elijah said, it is enough. I don't think Elijah wanted to die because if Jezebel wanted to kill him and is asking God to kill him, then Elijah should not have been asking God to kill him. <laughs> Elijah should have just surrendered to Jezebel. Yes. Elijah was not willing to die. Yes. <laughs> Elijah got teased, I can't agree. Yes. I cannot go to Namari. Jacques and Dura is in. In a yay. Shukanzi mukazi wa abada kundura. Saka kana ushida kutindi kura. Ingo no ura yewa kana jezeberi. Jungo pera kufa kufa. It's not true that Elijah wanted to die. He was a desperate man who was afraid of a wicked woman. Yes. On the other end, Elisha anointed Jehu, and he sent the son of the prophets to say to him. Where the dogs licked Naboth's blood, there they shall also lick Jezebel's blood. Yes. Are you getting this? Yes. yes. This is a different reaction to the same woman. According to Elisha, this is the time for Jezebel to die. Yes. According to Elijah, this is my time to die. This woman is too powerful. <laughs> I can't do anything about her. Yes. We are proving that Elisha has a superior assignment <coughs> to Elijah's assignment. Yes. First Kings 
chapter 19. Yes. First Kings chapter 19, verse number 13. Let's and start from verse 12. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still small voice. And it was so, when Elijah heard it, that he wrapped his face in, in his mantle, and went out, and stood in the entering of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him, and said, What doest thou here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, because the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thine, thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And the Lord said unto him, Go return on thy way to the wilderness of Damascus, and when thou comest, anoint Hazael to be king over Syria. And Jehu, the son of Nimshi, shalt thou anoint to be king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of Abimahola, shalt thou anoint to be a prophet in thy room. So these are the three assignments that Elijah received from God. Go to Syria yes. and anoint Hazael to replace ben -Hadad, the king of Syria. Go and anoint Jehu, that Jehu may replace Ahab, the son of Omri. Yeah. And anoint Elisha to be a prophet in your place. Yes. Elisha shall replace you. Uh -huh. Of these three assignments that Elijah received from God, Elijah only did one thing. He went to seek for Elisha to follow him. Yes. He never went to Syria to anoint Hazael to replace ben -Hadad, the king of Syria. What Elijah failed to do was done by Elisha. Yes. Chapter 8, verse 7, Second Kings. Yes. And Elisha came to Damascus. Yes. And ben -Hadad, the king of Syria, was sick. Yes. Who came to Damascus? <laughs> Elisha. Is it Elijah? No. no. It was Elisha who came to Syria, yes. whose capital city is Damascus. Yes. ben -Hadad, the king of Syria, was sick. Yes. And it was told him, saying, The man of God is come hither. Yes. yes. And the king said unto Hazael, Take a present in thine hand, and go meet the man of God, and inquire of the Lord by him, saying, Shall I recover of this disease? So Hazael went to meet him, and took a present with him, even, even of every good thing of Damascus, forty camels burden, and came and stood before him and said, Thy son ben -Hadad, king of Syria, had sent me to thee, saying, Shall I recover of this disease? And Elisha said unto him, Go say unto him, Thou mayest certainly recover, albeit the Lord hath showed me that he shall surely die. And he said to yeah, His he, countenance steadfastly until he was ashamed. Yes. And the man of God wept. And as I said, Why weepeth my Lord? And yes. he answered, <coughs> yes. Because I know the evil that thou would do unto the children of Israel. Yes. Their strongholds would thou set on fire. Mm -hmm. And their young men would thou slay with the sword. Mm -hmm. And would dash their children and rip up their women with the child. Yes. And as I said, But what? Is thy servant a dog that he should do this great thing? And Elisha answered, The Lord hath showed me that thou shalt be king over Syria. Yes. So the man who anointed Hazel to be king over Syria, it was Elisha. Yes. Mm -hmm. But the assignment was not given to Elisha by God. Yes. It was given to Elijah. Yes. Which means Elisha finished heavy duty jobs yes that elijah had failed to do yes shakata zwa kuitwa na elijah shakaitwa do zvakazvitwa na elisha yes chapter 9 verse 1 and 2 we read it we, let's read it pastor again yes second and elisha, kings chapter 9 verse 1 and 2 and elisha the prophet called one of the children of the prophets and said unto him get up thy loins and take this box of oil in thine hand, and go to Ramoth Gilead, 
when thou comest thither, look out there, Jehu, the son of Jehoshaphat, yes. the son of Nimshi, and go in and make him arise up from among his brethren and carry him to an inner chamber. Then take the box of oil and pour it on his head and say, Thus says the Lord, I have anointed thee king over Israel. Then open the door and flee and turn not. <laughs> so, who anointed Jehu to be king over Israel? Elisha. Elisha. It was Elisha. Yes. yes. But who was given this assignment? Elijah. Elijah. It was Elijah. Yes. Which means Elisha has the capacity to do the things that Elijah failed to do. Yes. yes. And this is what John meant <laughs> in Mark chapter 1, verse 7. <laughs> John preached the saying, there comes one mightier than I yes. after me. Yes. The latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to stoop down and unloose. Yes, yes. He shall take over from me, but I have no capacity to take over from him. Yes. That's why the Bible says of his kingdom there shall be no end. Yes. That's why it is called an everlasting kingdom. Yes. That's why he was declared to be a priest forever. Yes. After the order of Melchizedek. Yes. It means once he gets into office, Christ is no successor. Yes. yes. According to Hebrews chapter 7, he is an unchangeable priesthood. Yes. yes. No one can lose. No one is worthy. You see, yes. to stoop down and to unloose the latchet of his shoes. Yes. Let me conclude this message. <laughs> we have no power, no strength to go forward with it. Think about it. When Elijah was now departing, he asked Elisha, what do you want? And Elisha said, I want a double portion of your spirit. And what we see in Elisha's ministry, we see more grace in Elisha's ministry. Yes. We see more boldness in Elisha's ministry. Yes. We see more strength in Elisha's ministry. Yes. To prove that Elisha is greater than Elijah. Yes. But how many know this? People think that Elisha was a servant of Elijah. <laughs> because there was a time when Elisha walked behind Elijah as a leader. Yes. Elisha behind, Elijah ahead. <laughs> Elisha behind, yes. Elijah ahead. <laughs> John chapter 1, yes. verse 25. Yes. And they asked him, and said unto him, Why baptizest thou then, if thou be not th that Christ, yes. or Elias, neither that prophet? John answered them, saying, I baptize with water, but there standeth one among you, who you know not. He it is, who coming after me is preferred before me. Whose shoes latch it, I am not worth to unloose. Read verse 27 again. Yes. He it is who coming after me is preferred before me. Whose shoes latch it, I am not worth to unloose. According to John, <laughs> John is telling the whole house of Israel. Yes. There is someone who is behind me. Yes. <laughs> the words is coming after me. Yes. It means the man is... <clears throat> Is behind me, I'm in front of him. Yes. But when you see me in front of him, oh. it doesn't mean that I'm greater than him. Yes. I'm inferior to him. Yes. Masona Pastor. Yes. Mukaona John Arukumberikwa Christ. Yes. Musa Zofunga Guti John Mukurukuna Christ. Yes. A command. Do we get Mukaona Elijah? Ari kumberi Elisha ari kumashure. Yes. Musa zofunga uti Elisha mukuru kuna Elisha. Yes. Elisha would be saying, 
There is one that comes after me. He yeah. is the preferred before me. Yeah. Yes. Because, because he was before me. Yes. Mashona Pastor. That is what exactly happened, Apostle. Yes. After Elijah was taken, because the sons of the prophets, they now realized that we should follow Elijah. Because yes. what Elijah managed to do was to make sure that the sons of the prophets who realized that this is the one with the double portion. Yes. What I want us to, to prove is what you have just said. Yes. We read First Kings 16, and we saw God telling Elijah what to do. Elijah did not do what God told him to do. The assignment was too great. It was finished by Elisha. It was carried out by Elisha. To prove that Elisha has certain capabilities than Elijah had. Yes. But that is not enough proof to show you that Elisha is greater than Elijah. Mm -hmm. As soon as Elijah left, the men of Israel came with a very serious complaint to Elijah. Yes. Which existed throughout the ministry of Elijah. <laughs> and yet they never came to Elijah with that complaint. Yes. Second Kings chapter 2. Yes. Let's see verse number 19. And the men of the city said unto Elisha. As soon as Elisha came back after yes. Elijah had gone, yes. what did the men of the city come to say? Behold, I pray thee, but the situation in this city is pleasant. The situation of this city is pleasant, as my Lord sees. Yes. But the water is not, that is, the water is useless. Yes. And the ground barren. Yes. And he said, bring me a new plate. Yes. And he put salt therein, and they brought it to him. And he went forth unto the spring of the waters, and he cast the salt in there. And he said, Thus says the Lord, I have healed these waters. There shall not be from thence any more death yes. or barren land. So the waters were healed until unto this day according to the saying of Elijah, which he spake. <laughs> there was a spring of water which had bitter water. Mm. The land was barren. Mm. The men of the city had this problem throughout the ministry of Elijah. Yes. They waited for Elijah to go Yes. In order for them to come to Elisha, and they said, Men of God, <laughs> the situation of this city is pleasant. Yes. But the only problem is the water is bitter yes. and the land is barren. Yes. The issues that were affecting the people of Israel were solved by Elisha. Yes. Who was a newly ordained prophet. Yes. Elijah was there. They never brought this matter to him. Yes. Second Kings chapter 4, verse number 1. Now they cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead, and thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord, and the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be bondmen. Yes. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me. What is thou in the house? And she said, Thine handmaid hath not anything in the house save a pot of oil. Then he said, Go, borrow thee vessels abroad of all thy neighbors. Even empty vessels borrow not a few. Yes. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and shalt pour out into all those vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. So she went from him and shut the door upon her, and upon his sons, who brought the vessels to her, and she poured out. And it came to pass, when the vessels were full, that she said unto her son, Bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, There is not a vessel more. And the oil stayed. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, Go, sell the oil, and pay thy debt. 
and live thou and thy children of the rest. Yes. Are you hearing? Yes. This widow, her husband was a prophet and her husband had died, but the husband had left a debt. But we are in 2 Kings chapter 4. Elisha was still new in the prophetic ministry, mm. which means this prophet who had died a husband, mm. he was a prophet in the days of Elijah. Yes. <laughs> which means in the days of Elijah, prophets accrued debts which they could not pay. Yes. But in the days of Elisha, the debts were being paid. Yes. <laughs> He paid a debt that I could never pay. Yes. Elijah Mporo Vita no Poro Mora Squared. Elijah Mporo Vita no Badra Squared. Yes. Sakasi Waneva Kaenda. Yes. Are you seeing the superiority of Elijah's ministry over Elijah's ministry? Yes. <coughs> Why didn't Elijah deal with this debt before he left? <laughs> he did it have a double portion yes. of this spirit. Now, if you remember, Elisha said, sell the oil, pay the debt, yes. and you are going to remain with some more oil, mm. and you are going to sustain yourself until the end of the drought. Yes. yes. Which means Elisha did not just pay the debt. Yes. He gave them a new way of life. Yes. He supplied them with the sustenance. Yes. The woman was a widow. Mm. Elisha didn't just pay the debt. Yes. He made sure they had something to eat from that day going onwards. Yes. And that's what Jesus has done for us. Yes. We were in debt to God. Yes. We couldn't pay our debt. Because our debt required the righteous blood. Yes. The blood of bulls and pigeons and rams could not atone for our sins. Mm. When Jesus comes, he provides a sacrifice with his own body. And our sins are paid for in full. Mm -hmm. He doesn't just clear the debt. He gives birth to a new testament where we receive the word that sustains us for as long as we live. Yes. Yes. What a prophet Elisha was. Yes. Elijah was Elisha's forerunner. Yes. <laughs> it is very clear. I'm sure you are following. Yes. The last two things I want to share with you about. Mm -hmm. With these two men, Elisha and Elijah. Mm -hmm. I want you to remember that if you are going to find time, consider the following. Elijah's ministry is recorded in 1 Kings, whereas Elisha's ministry is recorded in 2 Kings. That distinction means Elijah represents the Old Testament system. Yes. Elisha represents the New Testament system. The miracles that Elisha performed are by far more than the miracles that Elijah performed. We can talk about the Mount Carmel standoff with the prophets of Baal in respect of Elijah's ministry. Yes. We can talk about the miracle of the rain. We can talk about the miracle of the ravens that fed him. We can talk about the miracle of the feeding of the Zarephath woman and the miracle of Praise the resurrection of the, yes. the, the son. We can talk about the death of Ahaziah that yes. Elijah prophesied when he tried to solicit for the rituals of Beelzebub, the Akron God. Yes. These are the miracles that are associated with Elijah. If you look at Elisha, mm. there are too many, too yes. many to mention. Yes. We can start by looking at the 42 sons who died yes. because the bears ate them yes. after they spoke evil and said Elisha was a bald head. In that very same chapter, he started his ministry. 42 children died. 
Kutanga kwa ministry ya Elisha kune vana vakafa 42. Mm. Nekuda yes. kwa mapira akava ajika yes. ari maviri vashora Elisha vachiti nyamanza kwira. <laughs> How does a great ministry begin with the death of children? Go and ask Matthew chapter 2. How does the ministry of Jesus Christ begin with the beheading of all the children that were two years and under by the genocide and the trigger <laughs> happy road? So far, I say, could a ministry be superior in Otanga Nirufu Wevana? And down of Unza Moses, could a ministry be superior in Otanga Nirufu Wevana? That is CA. But there is a plethora of miracles in the ministry of Elisha. Talk about the healed waters. Talk about the food that he provided to the sons of the prophets in the great death, the Gilgal incident. Yes. There are so many things yes. that Elisha did. He anointed Azael, he anointed Jehu. There are so many things that Elisha did in his life. The sons of the prophets wanted to extend their college. They lost an axe head. He brought it onto the surface with a branch. Yes. Elisha prophesied that tomorrow by this time, food shall be sold for a shekel, something that never happened in the days of Elijah. Yes. Elisha is a broader ministry than Elijah. But the last thing I want to talk about, I want to talk about the point of departure. Let's finish it by reading 2 Kings 2, Elijah, the forerunner. 2 Kings chapter 2, from verse 1. And it came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind, that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. And Elijah said unto Elisha, Tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord hath sent me to Bethel. And Elisha said unto him, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they left Gilgal. So they went down to Bethel. And then they went to Bethel. Yes. Elijah and Elisha left Gilgal. Yes. They went to Bethel, yes. Yes. And the sons of the prophets that were at Bethel came forth to Elisha. And he said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master? Let's read verse 4. Let's leave this one. And Elijah said unto him, Elisha, tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord hath sent me to Jericho. So they are now leaving Bethel. Yes. Gilgal, Bethel, Jericho. And they are still together, Elijah and Elisha. Yes. And he said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they came to Jericho. And the sons of the prophets that were at Jericho came to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he answered, Yea, I know it. Hold ye your peace. And Elijah said unto him, Tarry, I pray thee, here, for the Lord hath sent me to Jordan. And he said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And they, they too went on. So, Gilgal, Bethel, Jericho, and finally, they are now arriving at Jordan River. Yes. And 50 men of the sons of the prophets went and stood to view afar off, and they too stood by Jordan. Let's end there. So, the ministry of Elijah ended <coughs> At Jordan River. Yes. Look at me, brethren. <laughs> Elijah's ministry ended by Jordan River. Yes. And Elisha's ministry started at Jordan River. <laughs> yeah. Brethren, so Yes, Mama. It's uh, very interesting. Now we know. Elijah disappeared at Jordan River. Yes. Mm -hmm. That was the beginning <coughs> of Elijah's ministry. Yes. Yes. As he crossed the Jordan River, <laughs> Elijah started his ministry. Yes. 
He made the sons of the prophets, they chided him. He cursed them and beers ate them up. And when he entered into the city, the men brought up their query, their inquisition, their inquiry, their request in regards to the bitter water and the barren land. Yes. From there, Elisha's ministry flourished. So Jordan River is the place where <laughs> the end over, take over happens between the forerunner and his master. Yes. Matthew chapter 3. Tashika kuma peto kefangeri. Elijah the forerunner. Nyaya ye kuti forerunner ano zoita end over ku muridzwenyaya inotoetikira pa Jordan River nyaya yacho. Ndopa ino perera. Yes. Ndopa no gumira assignment ya forerunner ipapo. Pachitanga assignment ya master wake pa Jordan River. Yes. Yes. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent you, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Esaias, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare you the way of the Lord, make his path straight. And the same John had his raiment of camels here and a leaden girdle about his loins, and his meat was locusts and wild honey. Then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region round about Jordan and were baptized of him in Jordan confessing their sins. Let's end there. Yes. So we now know where John was. Yes. Where was John the pastor? Jordan. John was John the forerunner. Yes. <laughs> yes. Was by the Jordan River. Yes. But who was his master? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yes. 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 Jesus was mightier than him. Yes. Let's see what happens in verse 13. Yes. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. Yes. <laughs> but John forbade him, saying, What, what happened? Read verse 13 again. Yes. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. Aha. <laughs> Did you see that? Yes. <laughs> who baptized who? <laughs> John. John, uh, Jesus. It came. was the forerunner. Yes. yes. Who baptized the master? Yes. As much as it was Elisha yes. who asked Elijah yes. for a double portion of his spirit. Yes. yes. Elisha was asking for a baptism. Yes. yes. <laughs> and what did Elijah say? When Elisha said, <laughs> I need a double portion of your spirit, <laughs> do you still remember, Pastor? It is hard. Yes. The thing that we have asked is, is hard. <laughs> <laughs> Elijah said to Elisha, yes. You want a double portion? Yes. It is hard. Yes. Thou hast asked a hard thing. Yes. Let's read verse 13 and see <laughs> if the forerunner didn't say the same words. Yes. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee. To Jordan and to John, yes. to be baptized of him. So Jesus, the Master, yes, he comes to the forerunner. Yes, mm. what is he looking for? To be, to be baptized. To be baptized. Yes. yes. Just like Elijah is asking the forerunner. Yes. Give me a double portion. <laughs> Let us see the answer of John. Yes. But John forbade him, saying, "I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me?" Is it different, <laughs> Pastor? It's the same. It's the same. Yes. Mas Johan ekuti aji te kuti ndoku babuti babati zei. Yes. Aka fana na na Elijah. It's hard. Ekuti zo kuti na zui hard. Yes. Ah, magera magera. Agoma, agoma, agoma. It's hard, but it shall be done to thee, which means. Verse fifteen. Yes. And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now. For thus it becometh to fulfill all righteousness. Then he, su he suffereth him. Let's end there. Yeah. So this is how we are going to end this message, brethren. <laughs> when John was by the Jordan River, yes. all that he was waiting for, he was waiting for Christ to take over from him. So the arrival of Christ by the Jordan River was already acted in the drama between Elisha and Elijah. Yes. 
So Elijah said to Elijah, give me a double portion of your spirit. <laughs> Elijah said, it's too hard. What you're asking is difficult. Mm -hmm. When Jesus arrives, the master says to the servant, baptize me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and John says, it's not possible, I will not do it. Yes. And the Lord said, please do it. Yes. We have to fulfill righteousness here. Mm -hmm. Are you following? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Pastor, <laughs> Pastor, you are laughing. Yeah. The message of Christ, brethren, it needs the Holy Spirit for you to learn about it. Yes. If you have Holy Spirit, you are going to enjoy the gospel. Yes. This Bible, this one, is the most complicated book under the sun. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the things I have said today, the verses we read, mo most of you or some of you, you read them more than 10 times. Yes. What you do not have is how these verses are connected. <laughs> <laughs> there is no commentary that can give you that interpretation. Yes. There is no internet website or internet link you can get the things we are teaching you. We need the Holy Spirit. Yes. We need the Holy Spirit. Yes. Mm -hmm. So when, when Malachi gave a prophecy and he said, Behold, I will send Elijah the prophet. Yes. The Lord was actually <laughs> reminding the world of the Elijah, Elisha ministry. Yes. One is a servant, the other is a master. Yes. But the servant is ahead of the master. Yes. The servant becomes more prominent than the master. Yes. The servant becomes more popular than the master to the extent that it becomes the duty of the servant to introduce the master. Yes. And to make a disclaimer. You may all know me as Elijah the Tishbite, yes. but the truth of the matter yes. is I'm inferior. <laughs> One that comes after me yes. is a double portion of what I'm doing. Yes. I am a coward. I can't anoint Azael. Yes. I can't anoint Jehu yes. to take over and kill Jezebel. Yes. There is a lot of things that I cannot do. Yes. I cannot stoop down and unloose the light of his shoes. The man that is behind me is greater than me, but I went ahead of him so that I can introduce him to you. This is the job of Elijah the forerunner. Yes. So when John is introduced, he has no problems whatsoever because his assignment has a template that is very clear. Yes. Are you getting this? Yes. Assignment. Assignment in a in a John Yakare Ruka. Neguti in a mumma gatombo eta car. Yes. But in our Zacho mind, it's no better up a Jordan River. Yes. When John was taken away from the Jordan River, the next thing is he was imprisoned and then he was beheaded by Herod. At the Jordan River, that's where the forerunner's ministry ends. John's ministry doesn't go anywhere beyond the Jordan River. So Elijah said, we are now going to kill God. We may remain behind. Elijah said, I will not stop. We shall go together. Elijah said, I'm now going to Bethel. May you remain behind. Elijah said, never. At Bethel, Elijah said, I'm now going to Jericho. May you remain behind. Mm -hmm. Elijah said, never. Yes. Why was Elisha refusing to remain behind? The answer is Elisha is a type of Christ. He knew this man's ministry does not end at Gilgal yes. or Bethel yes. or Jericho. Yes. Yes. This man's ministry yes. ends at Jordan River. Yes. Yes. That's why this question was only raised at the Jordan River. Yes. Ask whatever you want yes. and you shall receive it. Yes. Elijah never asked it at Gilgal, Bethel, or Jericho. He only asked this question by the Jordan River. Yes. Pajordan Panayaya. Pajordan Panayaya.
Topa no tangira ministry ya Savior. Soon after he was baptized of John by the Jordan River, the Lord went into a 40-day fasting. After the 40-day fasting, he went into picking his apostles. And that's how the ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ started. Yes. The same way Elisha's ministry started. Yes. What a marvelous message. Did you enjoy the message, Pastor? Yes, I'm also enjoying the comment here on our live chat. Okay. He was talking about the, the Jordan River. He says, Elijah, he says, Miliam Mutema Chani, at Jordan River. Elijah handed over to Elisha. Moses handed over to Joshua. Yes. And John handed over to Jesus. Yes, that's true. Yes. That's true. That's where it happened from Deuteronomy 31. Yes. yes. It happened there. Yes. At Deuteronomy 31 to Deuteronomy 34. Yes. That's when we see Moses dying. Yes. And yes. soon after his death, Joshua crossed the Jordan Cross, River. Yes. And they went into the promised land. Yes. yes. It's important. Yes. And if you check the second Kings 2, when this end over take over happened, according to the scriptures. Yes. The sons of the prophets were watching. Yes. yes. They saw the Jordan River being parted. They saw it. They saw yes. everything. Yes. They saw the house of Israel was there yes. when Jesus was baptized by John. Yes. yes. Everyone saw it happening there. Yes. It's yes. not a secret. Yes. So this is the takeaway for today, brethren. We hope you have enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Let's meet on the midweek service. Maybe we are going to do testimonies there and find out, maybe do a review as well, Pastor, to see if our people have understood the evidence we have presented that proves that Elijah was Elisha's forerunner. Yes. Because that was the major me message. And because of that, that's why Malachi said, the one who shall come is not Elisha. Mm -hmm. The one who shall come is Elijah. Yes. <laughs> because Elisha was representing Christ who was already on his way. Yes. What the world needed to provide for this work to be uh, fulfilled, we just needed a forerunner just like Elijah. Okay. Just like Elijah. So we thank God for today. We thank God for the service. Until we meet again on Wednesday, it's bye for now.